I should be live. Hey, everybody. It's hard to tell the exact point I go live. I'm sure it's almost always earlier than I think it is. <laughs> it's also easier to tell on Twitch because I don't have to hit two different buttons to go live like I do on YouTube. Pop out chat. So you can give me be about that wide. Hi Ash. Express lifts movie tonight, Silent Hilly. I feel like there's a joke I'm missing there. In the unlikely event of air raid sirens, transition into dark Silent Hill is certain. <laughs> <laughs> Come along and visit the resort town of Silent Hill for a vacation you'll never forget or leave behind if you leave it all. <laughs> Hi, Special Iron. Hi, HD. Hi, Kura. <laughs> Hi, Sebastian. Oh, thanks. I'm going to continue to wear my these cat ears as long as I have my Halloween decorations up. So, like, I'll probably wear them until about Thanksgiving or so. <laughs> Natalie is me. <laughs> Hi, Jan. Your router is labeled Silent Hill wherever you log on. You connect to Silent Hill. That's a little scary. <laughs> <clears throat> There's plenty of people here, so I guess I'll uh, go ahead and get started. I'm not sure exactly how far into this I'm going to get. Um, definitely the end of... I think I may stop somewhere... Maybe after uh, Silent Hill Origins is a point where I'll stop, but we'll see. Because the one on Homecoming is a little bit long, and so is Shattered Memory, so... So I think this will be like... This will turn out to be a three-weekend event. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, thanks. Yeah, I loved Halloween 2018. I feel like my video maybe could have been a little bit better. I wish I had seen the movie more times before making it, but still. I'm glad I at least got around to covering it. <laughs> You're gonna live in Silent Hill as long as you live. And maybe afterwards. <laughs> Logging on to Silent Hill. Hi, George. <clears throat> okay, there's plenty of people here, so I guess I'll just go ahead and get started. Let me know if the volume is okay. I think I usually put it about at the halfway mark. I'm watching them in release order. It just makes more sense that way. Because my Silent Hill 1 video came out so long after <laughs> the rest of these. Like, I think it would be weird to watch that one first. Oh, blistered thumbs. Whoops. Oh, sorry. I had to reload. It's been open for a while. Oh yeah. This is uh this is actually a picture of my my in-laws front door at their old house. I thought it uh I thought it looked kind of cool. It doesn't really look like Henry's door, but you know. Oh, and there's a little Freddy. There's a, my little Freddy uh my little toy Freddy there and I think that's a I think that's a leopard, stuffed leopard. I had to the effect. Hang on. Yeah, that effect. I had to had some. I had to have somebody else do that for me. <laughs> I forgot who it was, but I'm sure I mentioned them in the credits. Hey, this is Dina. Welcome to the den. Well, look where we are. We finally made it to the fourth installment in the Silent Hill series. Silent Hill Four. 
The room. I did not hit her. It's not true. <laughs> Bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Now that that's out of the way. I literally put that joke Isn't in there for everyone else. I didn't really, really think, think it was that funny, but everyone series. else liked it. I played the first two games all the way through, and Silent Hill 3 up to maybe halfway through the mall area, then had given up on it for the time being. And sort of forgot about it. It'd be even weirder considering you, re you refer to pr Silent other previous... Yeah, that too. ...video game magazines, and I had to play it. <laughs> Turned out that it covered the opening of the game and the entire subway level. Pretty good chunk of the game, if you think about it. I was completely blown away. I still haven't watched Ash vs. Evil Dead. Someday I will. Like first person view, then having your character die Thanks for the follow, Biotic Warlock. <laughs> oh, oh, you're on- that's, that's on Twitch, oh well. But your character is trapped in the apartment, just like in the dream. What the hell? What the hell? <laughs> you find a way out through the hole in the wall that takes you to another world, where you meet another person and- Who are you? And eventually find another hole. Oh yeah, you definitely need to experience the again. games. It's totally what? different than the movies. Another dream. And definitely the comics, holy crap. But it seems so real. Hmm. That was a serious mind screw to me when I first played it. And long after the game stopped making a production out of it, I still couldn't get over it for a long time. I was just like, wow, I go through a hole and I end up back in bed. Every time like it's normal. What the hell? What the hell? <laughs> what the, the hell? demo ends on a serious downer. Are you okay? But God, it left me so intrigued. Is it still a little quiet? I think I yeah, turned it up. Yeah, I know this is a spoiler, uh, but it ago. happens in the first level. And if you even just know about the existence of Silent Hill 4, you probably already know about this scene anyway. The choke makes the game scarier. It was still a couple of weeks before the game was going to come out, so I spent all that time on pins and needles. To help ease the torture, I brought out Silent Hill 3 and finally finished the Oh, campaign. hi, Biotic Warlock. <laughs> you are and here. After I got to play through Silent Hill 4 a few more times, I went back to the beginning and played all four games again in order. And it forced me to recognize the sheer awesomeness of this unique franchise. And I became a Silent Hill yeah. fan for life. So, Silent Hill 4 not only got me to finally go back and finish Silent Hill 3, it also played a big part in making me a big fan of the series. <laughs> Glad so, we didn't hear a character Silent in Silent Hill, Hill, Hill ask us anyway, how's your sex life? Or November. Or April of the following year. So, love it or hate it, we all owe something to this game, so it deserves a little respect. <laughs> but I will admit that despite I hate all this fading to black. Features, I definitely don't do that anymore. The weakest of the first four Silent Hill games. It seems like it was kind of rushed. <laughs> Comics are horrifying and not in a good way. A yeah. lazy in some areas. I actually just watched. I actually just. In fact, I, I think it was while I was putting up Halloween decorations. I watched Linkara's video where he put all of the Silent Hill videos together in one long one. Holy crap! Those comics are bad. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's like one or two that are actually good. I forgot uh, which I forgot what they were called. Still finding it hard to hear. Okay, I'll turn it up some more. <laughs> I love that little cat plushie. It's in storage right now. Hi, Mad Morpheus. Hi, Neo. People are still coming in. Wow. Hi, Meyer. Thank you. I'll get into that more later. Okay, it's turned all the way up now unless I have I to first turn up Silent the desktop Hill audio, so... It seemed pretty straightforward, Let me know if it's still it too quiet. Like there's a lot of symbolism involved. Now that I'm a lot more familiar with this game, I've picked up on a lot that I missed Terra's in the beginning. Avatar. And maybe a lot of other people missed too. The game is basically too subtle for its own good at times. <laughs> it's probably the most combat heavy out of the first four games. No shotguns, just a pistol, and later a revolver. The game basically encourages you to use melee weapons. That's true. But to its credit, Henry does kick ass with them, especially the axe. So wailing on enemies can actually be pretty fun. One thing I love, that I think hasn't shown up in later games if I'm remembering correctly, is the charge attack. This is the first, and I think the last, case where if you hold down on the attack button, the character will deliver a devastating attack. I love doing that. <laughs> That's right, you don't fuck with Henry. 
If there's one thing in this game I could really do without... I thought about doing vlogs or reviews of Haunting of Hill House or Haunting of Bly Manor. I haven't seen the either of those, so no. While, and there are items to help you fight them. The Sword of Obedience, which no pins into the ground for a while. And the Saint Medallion, which keeps you from getting damaged by nearby ghosts. But they break eventually. Yeah, that's right. The presence of ghosts causes headaches for Henry, and these enemies will cause damage just by being anywhere near you. I forgot about that. That's a That's not right. Forgot about that. That's also, a pain the in the ass. Also, the inventory system was changed with this one. Limited inventory, I don't mind too much because usually holes leading back to your apartment and your supply box are not hard to find. <laughs> Except in the last level where they're non-existent. But if you're going to limit the inventory, you better give me the option to drop useless items. There are a couple of weapons that break eventually, and once that oh, happens... Oh yeah, you can't drop items, that around. sucks. Also, the game doesn't tell you what an item is until it's already in your inventory. So if you pick something up because you want to find out what it is, only to find out that it's useless... <laughs> tough shit, you're stuck with it for a while. Ugh, I hate the bleeping out also, of swear words. Also, the ability words. to select items in real time I don't know exactly nice when I stopped doing option, that. But sometimes I'd like for the game to pause while I'm trying to figure out what item I'm going to use. And God forbid I'm ever down to a sliver of health in the middle of a battle, and the cursor is. Dogs seem pretty casual about the guy hacking hurt. them with an axe. <laughs> I, I know. Run away to buy some time anyway, so it's not like selecting items in real time is necessarily fast. Yeah, the dogs don't really Plus, attack you too much. Are so tiny, sometimes it's hard to tell what they are. Again, in the middle of an intense battle, that can be a. I think actually there are two different types of dogs, and one is more aggressive than Graphics the other. Graphics are kind of a mixed bag with this one. I love the character designs. I think the characters Hi, Johannes. look great. As long as they're not moving too much. The animation is kind of cheap at times. Oh, you downloaded the them. Characters cool. tend to look kind of stiff. This is one of those reasons why I kind of think the game is rushed. I can forgive almost everything except for how the arms look. I boogie. Speaking as someone who used to do character modeling and animation for a video game Allergic company, to I can attest that shoulders are a bitch to get right when it comes to attaching a model to a skeleton and animating it. It's something I always had trouble with. Yeah. But, you know, I was something of a beginner. There is no excuse for it to look that way in a finished game. Oh, God, what the hell? Especially a game a established franchise like Silent Hill. I'm guessing that with more time they would have fixed it, but come on, Team Silent. A lot of the complaints people have about Silent Hill 4 are relative, but graphically there is no excuse for it to be a step down from Silent Hill 3. One of the things about Silent Hill 4 that the haters love to hold against it is that it started out as not a Silent Hill game. Yeah, the dogs do but sound like big point, cats. Konami it's weird. decided to put the Silent Hill label on it because they figured it wouldn't sell otherwise. Now there's a lot not of being able to identify the item was the worst. Exactly yeah. what point in the game's development that the change happened? Until you pick it up anyway. I scoured the internet trying to find out to no avail. But one thing that's pretty telling, in my opinion, is that every article I could find referred to it as Silent Hill 4. So it had to have happened pretty early in development. And you know what else? It was always going to be made by Team Silent. It was always going to have music by and be produced by Akira Yamoka. And it was always going to reference Jacob's Ladder and all those other things where the Silent Hill series draws its Hi, inspiration King. from. So it was always going to be a Silent Hill game in spirit, if not in practice. So if you just don't like the game, fine. Oh my god, I'm still using just Rant don't Alert. don't use, it's not really a Silent Hill game as an excuse because it's kind of a weak one. Anyway, I guess what I'm getting at is that this game has its good and bad points. Get like the chance, else. I think you'd like Haunting of Your Hill House. Blind vary, Manor is good too, but I prefer Hill House. Yeah, I've heard good is. things about Blind Manor. I'd rather focus on the good, which is mostly what I'm going to be doing. But more than anything else, I'm going to be talking Slightly about this game's story problem with Resident Evil 7 and the characters. Hopefully, I can help people understand that. It doesn't better. tell you. You can decide on your own if the game is good or bad or somewhere in between. But at least you can make an informed opinion rather than just hating it because it's different. So, of course, there's going to be spoilers. So, if you haven't played the game yet, there's, there's still time. time. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> Evil dies tonight. <laughs> I should change it to that just for no reason. I have not seen the entirety of the room, but I've seen enough videos on it to get an idea of it. But I did see the disaster artist. <clears throat> Yeah, I liked how in the Silent Hill games, as soon as you don't need a key anymore, uh, the game will tell you and give you the option to drop it. I thought that was really useful. <laughs> Shoulder doesn't look dislocated in the slightest. <clears throat> yeah, I know Walter really did a number on Eileen there, dislocated her shoulder and nobody bothered to fix it. And apparently it doesn't hurt somehow.
Wasn't this in Silent Hill 3 in development at roughly the same time? I think so. I think maybe I didn't know that when I made this video, but yeah, I think that's true. Or at the very least, they made one like right after the other or that. I think probably they were being made at the same time, or at least there was some overlap there. <clears throat> oh yeah, the circumcision thing. <laughs> God. The rant alert is cool when used judiciously. Yeah, it's just like, oh god, that drama. Oh, you mean the uh, the circumcision thing? Yeah, um, yeah. The whole rant alert thing was just because it was just so typical for um, rant videos were just so typical at the time that I just kind of went with it a little bit. Kind of aged a little bit badly. Well, not aged badly. It's just it's it's just it's a kind of joke that's just sort of a product of its time. <clears throat> if that makes any sense. Watching the room with an interacting audience was fun, especially the first time viewing. I can imagine. That must be fun. There was a hole here. It's gone now. <laughs> Yeah, I have not read uh, Downpour Anne's story, but I'm really curious about it. I think seeing uh, the story play out from her perspective would be interesting. <clears throat> so just as Silent Hill 3 is a continuation of Silent Hill, Silent Hill 4 is sort of a continuation of Silent Hill 2. Rather than following Age any of the charmingly. main characters, oh, that's their fair, fates I guess. are pretty much spelled out anyway, with the exception of James, which varies on what ending you get. Silent Hill 4 takes a character who never appears in Silent Hill 2, but is mentioned several times. Age badly really would be if your videos are almost nothing but rants. Yeah, true. And makes that character the yeah, focus Age of badly wasn't game. the best way to... Of course, to, I'm talking about serial killer Walter Sullivan. Wasn't the best way to describe it. I think I meant more that it just, that you know, was funnier at the time. ...about an orphanage called Hope House. Though it's called Wish House in this game, probably due to a translation screw-up. <laughs> I'll get more into the details of Walter Sullivan later. You basically learn about him by learning about his victim, so we're gonna start there. Mm. If there's one area where Silent Hill 4 <clears throat> is pretty weak, it's character development. But there's a lot oh, of information yeah. on the characters that's out there that didn't make it into the game, presumably because it was rushed. Unfortunately, Silent Hill 4 came out after the Book of Lost Memories was published, so we can't look to that. But the extra info about the characters ended up on the original Japanese official site for Silent Hill 4, and eventually on to translatedmemories.com. Another crimson tome. Who are you? Time to talk about the victims. What's your name? Cynthia is the first character you come across, and she makes an interesting impression. <laughs> Will you help me find it? I'm kind of scared all alone. <laughs> I'll do a special favor for you later. How messed up is it to be teasing a guy who has been <laughs> in solitary confinement for nearly a week? Have some fun. Not that she could really know that, but still. <laughs> Henry tries to help her out, but she keeps disappearing. There's a reason for that, which I'll get to later. Eventually, Henry does find her, but it's too late. It's just... a dream, right? No. <laughs> uh, I... I feel like I'm dying. Hi, it's almost Thanks. funny to think of what a tearjerker this scene Yeah, is. say what you want about Silent Hill, but it had, had Silent Hill 4, but it had a kick-ass soundtrack. We really don't know anything about these characters. Yes, I finished that novelization I ages ago. Just that convincing. <laughs> Cynthia channeling Maria so a little bit. One of the victims? Well, it turns out that Walter had known who she was for a long time. They met when she was 15. She already had a habit of going to nightclubs, by the way. But he'd been stalking her since she was five. Creepy. <laughs> Apparently he wasn't too much older than her because he was nervous when talking to her. Not too different from how Henry is, probably. Also, this happened in the subway, which is why this is where she ends up in the game. 
She basically told Walter that he was repulsive and told him to bug off. Naturally, she was picked to represent temptation because she's such a flirt, to put it nicely. <laughs> but I'm guessing her giving Walter the brush off had a little something to do with it, too. It was partly revenge for that. I don't know if her name refers to anything, but it's clearly ethnic, <laughs> Cynthia Velasquez. And the first syllable sounds like <laughs> sin. You're Could definitely bleeding to death on the floor. I'm... Welcome to Silent Hill. That's right. <laughs> this is just a dream. And a really terrible one, too. Francis Bacon's inspiration on Silent Hill. I think I have, yeah. I think I didn't know. Maybe I didn't know about it at the time I made this video. But yeah, I, I think I I think I know who you're talking about. Some kind of crazy religious Oh, I didn't know Jacob's Ladder was also inspired by that. That's cool. He's treated with a lot less importance than Cynthia. In fact, when you get close to him, he just starts talking in game. No cutscene or anything. And every conversation with him is one-sided. Kind of. He gives you the chill, chills, huh? This stone. I like to think that Henry finds him creepy and or annoying, so he tries to interact with him as little as possible. That's yeah, totally Can't my head canon like that Jasper Henry is just, just finds like Jasper cool. annoying. Open. <laughs> that nosy guy. In my novelization, I have Henry really saying good. shit like, Are you fucking kidding me? I hate this guy. I could <laughs> let you have it, but, 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 but not for free. <laughs> the plot is bonkers in all Even the best ways. Like, where else would you get a plot like, kids. okay, the guy wants to kill me all because really he thinks my apartment is his mom. Also, he's dead. <laughs> yeah. Is that he's obsessed with supernatural stuff. He talks about wanting to find the devil and how great creepy places like Silent Hill I'm not Silent sure what Hill would are. happen if Tommy Wiseau went to Silent Hill. He also doesn't seem too worried about being trapped in a dark forest. <laughs> Tearing me apart, Oh, and head. check out his shirt. That's Samael, the demon from the first game that Alessa was quote-unquote pregnant with. Oh, man, that was awesome. He doesn't really become separated from Henry, so much as he and Henry just don't bother trying to stick together at all. <laughs> but you do eventually dogs. find him when a door you tried earlier, only to find it locked, is suddenly open a crack and they're screaming. He's on fire! He's on fire! Jasper has what I would consider the second most horrific death in the game. Oh, and for those of you who complain about Henry's lack of reactions, I'll give you this one. Normally I can defend him, and I've got some theories about why Henry acts the way he does, but... Yeah, walking into a room to find someone on fire and reacting as if the worst part is that you forgot your shades... Yeah, I'll give you this one. <laughs> True. <laughs> Jasper doesn't have much of a history with That Walter. reaction could have been a lot Basically, better. Basically, he witnessed his two friends, Sine and Bobby, being killed by Walter, and he was spared. It's Henry really walks in on a guy who's on fire, and he's like, shit, that's bright. <laughs> Basically, Walter lured all three of them into a secluded area, telling them yeah, he'd introduce them detail. to the devil. Out of sight from Jasper, <laughs> both of his friends were strangled. Walter beckoned Jasper, but he turned and ran. But of course, he only succeeded in delaying the inevitable. I really wish we could have seen all that. It sounds wonderfully disturbing. Uh, I wonder what they did here. By the way, I'm guessing the stutter is a symptom of post-traumatic stress. Uh, I... To help with, with my st stutter. I could have set this cop clip up a lot better. No offense, pal. It ain't helping. It's just any time I hear someone stutter, Jasper I think of Bill from It, so I just wanted to reference gun. it, but I didn't for really, no I didn't make it clear. It's a recurring thing in the first four games. There's always someone with either the name Ed or Gyne. Something big is gonna happen. Finally, it's gonna happen! <laughs> oh yeah, DeSalvo. You meet Andrew DeSalvo in the water prison. There isn't a whole lot of conversation at first because he's too busy begging to be let out of his cell. It's the hottest but once he is let out, he'll stumble onto an interesting scene. Die in the air. <laughs> he didn't start the fire. There's that kid again. Interesting thing about this scene, everything Andrew's saying here, there's no, uh, there's no, uh, you know, captioning for it. So you just have to listen really hard if you want to make out what he's saying. I actually had to do that when I, uh, when I wrote my novelization. I actually, like... Listen to this over and over again at a really high volume, and I, I actually tried to type out to the best of my ability what he was actually saying there. Essentially, he's essentially begging Walter not to kill him. It's 
so that's why my gasoline went missing. He thrusts his fists against the post and still insists he sees the ghosts. Uh, Anti Lullaby always hits me hard. I know that's a, such a heartbreaking song. I see Oblivious just flopped in. <laughs> Saying something like, no, don't walk away, something. I'd forgotten I wasn't paying attention before now. I used to work at the orphanage watching the kids. I'm Andrew DeSalvo. Oh my god. I don't think Henry's too oh, crazy about this guy god. either. <laughs> Henry's just like, okay, weirdo. <laughs> it's just as well, though, because once again, you don't see him again until it's too late. 18121 or 18 slash 21. <laughs> DeSalvo's one character the game is pretty straightforward about once you get back to the area where he died. It turns out that he was one of the guards who watched over the kids and abused the hell out of them. He doesn't seem like the type with how skittish he is, but I think that's the result of him finally realizing just how bad his crimes were and how much he could suffer for it. Oh god, he is an annoying ghost. I forgot DeSalvo about that. DeSalvo is probably the only victim who arguably deserved what he got. Naturally, he symbolizes watchfulness. His name is reminiscent of Desaad, as in Marquis Desaad. Again, it's just a theory, but it's an interesting one, and it does fit with his role. He also has- his name is also similar to the Boston Strangler, which I didn't know at the time I made this video. I forget- I can't think of his name now, but it's a very similar name. Um, in fact, I think maybe all of the victims, or a lot of the victims, have the same names as serial killers, because there was Henry, portrait of a serial killer, and there was a, a rare female serial killer named Eileen, although it was spelled differently, and of course Jasper has the same last name as Ed Gein. According to that town so voice. something I didn't, I didn't pick up on when I made this video. It was actually the center of their religion. There's something going on in this room. What do you mean? What I would I want from a new it. Silent Hill game? Um, I don't know. I would just want it to be an actual game and not a pachinko machine. I would want uh, some other na company to be behind it instead of Konami, but that's too much to hope for, probably. Eileen Warnos. That might. That's probably the same one. Yeah, I know that. That I recognize the spelling of the first name at least. Damn killers of cereal. <laughs> the naming scheme wouldn't surprise me. After all, the streets are named after suspense and horror writers. That's true. Angel Heart. I never saw that. For it not to be made by Konami somehow, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Coming from inside there. Help! Hey, Richard. More pyramid head. From your window? No. Don't be rude, Toho. <laughs> well, that's a next up is Richard Braintree. He lives in the same building as Henry. You can see his apartment through Don't your window, rude, and he even shows up outside the door. But that's about it. Well, I'm gonna go call the super. Not because he's concerned, though. Yeah, he it's because he's a control it. freak he definitely who doesn't like anything it. unusual going on anywhere near his sanctuary. Yeah, the peephole scenes were, were creative. <sighs> You're a real person. Hey, you the guy that lives in Crossroads. Boxhead. <laughs> yeah. He's an asshole, but he's one of my favorite characters. I'm Richard Braintree. From 207. Definitely my favorite out of the victims. He doesn't have much more screen time than anyone else, but there's just something compelling about him. I do like Richard Must Braintree. Must be his tie. <laughs> Must be his anyway. tie. Hey guys, I'm going home. <laughs> and the way he points both thumbs over one shoulder. Hey guys, I'm going home. Henry sees Richard talking to the kid, and you know he's thinking, oh god, no good can come of this. The kid he was talking about? 
You look a lot like a little punk that I once caught sneaking around there. And he is so right. <laughs> Richard has probably the most horrific death in the game. I've seen this cutscene about a thousand times and it never gets any easier to watch. Yeah, it's pretty Silent awful. Silent Hill 4 is definitely the most gory and brutal out of the first four games. I kind of feel like PT was the last chance we had. Richard is another of a character truly that the great game title is pretty straightforward about behind for the it. most yeah. part. Either there's some bad translation going on, <clears throat> or maybe Walter Hi, is an unreliable narrator, because most of what you see in the game is based on his memory. Either way, the game basically says that Richard dragged a guy named Mike in his apartment and skinned him alive. And I did take that at face value at first. At one point you come across a cassette tape labeled Skinned Mike. And I was afraid to listen to it. It doesn't help that when you do listen to the tape, Sudden it's Cartman. hard to tell what's going on <laughs> yeah. just by the dialogue you hear. But fortunately, the website described the scene better. The worst incident was when Mike, resident of room 301, bumped into Braintree's shoulder in the corridor of the apartment Never unintentionally. Seen better call Saul. At the time, Richard was even what more What a shocking end. So he dragged Mike by the collar of his shirt into his apartment. A crowd kind of gathered sounds to like see what's going Woods to happen. I kind of apparently had a tape that. recorder. Suddenly the door opened and Mike, apparently naked, ran away. Then Richard came out of the room holding Mike's shirt and jeans, which were soaked in blood. How do you like that? Hang on a second. Did you figure it out on your own that 121 was actually slash 21? Um, I don't think I did. I, um, I honestly don't remember, but I don't think I picked up on it until it was revealed. Shocking. <laughs> that bit where Henry tries to shake Richard's hand and he doesn't shake it, and Henry keeps his hand up for a few seconds and slowly puts it down without saying anything. I was like, yep, that's me. <laughs> Richard is such an asshole, but he's an entertaining asshole. Oh, Edward Delacroix treatment. Oh, God. Did I watch the videos related to the Silent Hill movies? Um, you mean the making of videos? Like I did for the first one. <clears throat> oh, you mean you mean my videos? Oh, no, not yet. I'm I'm doing these in the order that they were made in. I think Silent Hill 1, uh, the Silent Hill movie, the first Silent Hill movie. I don't remember when that was. I don't think it's in this playlist though. Coming to you. These clothes are disgusting. Get them out of my sight. Richard, of course. I know. It'll be perfect to wrap his body in. That's the crazy cat lady. Rachel who literally to wrap up one of dead alive. Cats so she can keep it in the <laughs> Thanks for the follow. So she used the on jeans Twitch. for that. <laughs> so they probably aren't yeah. even here. Hold it. I think I'll keep that one for myself. Hold it. I think I'll keep that one for myself. No. <clears throat> a drunk guy who took the shirt. After that, Richard took a look into the crowd and noticed a little kid among the people. You! Oh, I think you snooping around again? Myself. Get your ass out of oh, here before it. you oh, really it. piss me oh, off! It. So either there's some bad translation going on, skin actually has a lot of meanings, and as a slang term it can mean just beating the crap out of somebody or taking all their belongings. Both of those could apply here. It could be that someone made a massive screw-up and seeing something about a character getting skinned figured that peeled his skin off sounded more dramatic, so we went with that not knowing the context. Or, since Walter was there when he was a little kid to witness it, it could be that his memory warped it into something much worse than it actually was. It would kind of explain why he thinks Richard deserves the electric chair. So yeah, Richard is an eccentric asshole, maybe even a sociopath, but I seriously doubt he ever actually tortured anybody. To Walter, he represents chaos for obvious reasons. Didn't they kind of do a similar I've murder heard that mystery Richard situation has the same with voice as Vincent from Silent Hill 3? But Silent Hill 4 doesn't credit its voice actor, yeah. so who knows if it's true? Yeah, it's not the same voice as Vincent. You don't trust me? What the hell's happened to us? I don't know about that. According to IMDb, Jasper has the same voice as Vincent. Something big is gonna happen. I don't think that one's true either. Finally, it's gonna happen. Well, for the two of you to die, that would be nice. 
But uh, who didn't knows? they kind of do a similar IMDb murder cannot be trusted when mystery situation with Cartman and South Park in the episode uh, so where Cartman stuffed animals were destroyed one by one? Was it like? Was it similar? I do remember that anyway, episode. I'm getting the hell out of here. Did I ever play Shattered Memories? Oh yeah, I made a video about it. Actually, I did a Let's Play of it too. Watch out for that kid. Yeah, the bit with the numbers was interesting. I didn't know the sponge was supposed to be wet. Just about all the other victims represent something negative from Walter's past, but there's one exception. What in the blue fuck was that? When she was a small child. Green Mile's a great movie. She was homeless and sleeping in the subway station. Eileen came by with her mother, and despite her mother's warning to stay away from the creepy homeless guy, she gave him her doll because she thought he looked lonely. When she walked oh, away thank with you, George. Mother, Walter cried. The scene where he relays some of this story to Henry is about the closest Walter comes to showing any kind of emotion or regret. Long time ago. Cartman being she trapped in Silent Hill. Oh, then. yeah. <laughs> Notice how long he looks down at that doll shaking his He would head. be so screwed. She looked so happy, holding her mother's hand. And then he gets rid of it. Here. Yeah. I'll give it to you. Don't take the doll, Henry. <laughs> Eileen is also the first person to notice that Henry might be in trouble, and really the only one who ever seems to care. How's it going with room 302? Yes, Eileen is a nice, sweet, caring person in a Silent Hill game. Oh yeah, she's screwed. <laughs> that she was does a fun become one of Walter's play. victims, but he doesn't finish the job. Dina's gonna cringe soon. Yeah, Wounded War song is a great track. Tell at first. Ever notice how Henry seems much more broken up over the death of the female characters than the male characters? Very soon you find out that Eileen is still alive in a hospital. Once you find her, she's a little upset. Eileen! Eileen, relax! Aww. That's so sad, the way she reacts. She's so traumatized. Despite everything, she still feels bad for Walter. I think this is a combination of her natural sympathy along with Walter's influence. Eventually, how do I do the game menu recreations? It depends on the game. Ideally, I can just kind of like, you know, take it into Photoshop and just kind of erase all the text and retype it, but um with like Silent Hill 4, god, the Silent Hill games got harder and harder with each one. With Silent Hill 4, I, I literally took a picture of my uh, in-law's front door because I thought they had a pretty cool looking front door and I just applied all the effects to it and I had to have somebody else do the animation where the words fade away. The actor they get when they can't afford Jim Carrey. I can kind of see it. And he was a good wild bill. If you take the doll you can't finish the game no that's not true it just it adds an extra haunting that you can't get rid of in your apartment henry sad he missed the second chance for a special favor <laughs> excuse me the scream was so loud oops Does Eileen look a bit like Ada Wong? Um, I'm trying to remember what Ada Wong looks like. Maybe? Oh, do I know why Silent Hill 4 didn't credit its voice actors? I have no idea. Like I said, the game, the game was kind of rushed, so I always assumed that was why, but... Hi, Jackie. <clears throat> Putting it in storage causes a haunting. That's right. Mm -hmm. 
Tim Curry played a killer in Criminal Minds. That's cool. Always thought it was sad to see Walter getting rid of the item associated with like his only positive human interaction he had in his entire life. I know. I always felt like he needed to get rid of it so he would be able to kill Eileen. <clears throat> yeah, it can be very tedious. <laughs> I generally like doing it though. It's kind of interesting just just uh like trying to keep it as close to the original as possible while still, you know, making it my own thing. <laughs> Tim Curry's creepiest character in that saying a lot. Look on the bright side with that doll, at least it isn't a zoo pyramid. Creepy old lady at, in a church gave you? Oh, are you talking about the, uh, the flower rose? <coughs> Peak Henry cringe. <laughs> I guess I can see how grabbing her would be bad, but, I mean, he had to keep her from getting away. I'm not sure what else he could have done, really. <clears throat> My friend watching me play this, he wanted me to take the doll so badly for this haunting. <laughs> oh... Oh, okay. The scream is loud in general. Jason Alexander played a killer? I, okay, I need to... Jesus, I should be watching Criminal Minds, I guess. I never really watched it, I don't think. Still wasn't the Krusty the Clown doll. <laughs> <laughs> Walter giving up the doll as his ego kills Star-Lord's mother moment. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> Not well put. Well, you know what I mean. He needed to keep her from getting away so he could protect her. <laughs> Smart ass. <laughs> she becomes possessed, but how much depends on how well you take care of her. If she takes only a little damage, there's only the occasional hint that Walter's memories are invading her mind. I used the subway all the time when I was younger. I can read this writing. It looks like some kind of a diary. Which is all that ever happens when I play, because I always play on the easy level and I don't have the heart to let her get hurt anyway. Some sickos like to see how badly messed up she can get to see how it changes her. <laughs> she reverts into Walter as a kid at times and things only get worse from there. <gasps> Henry! It turns out that she can't go through the portals like Henry can, so you're stuck with her for the rest of the game. Have you been here the whole time? Aww. Yeah, and I didn't see any hole either. More hugs for Henry. You just disappeared all of a sudden. <clears throat> I can't stay here by myself. I'll be cursed. I know it. What am I gonna do? Hi, Nate. On the upside, you can ditch her occasionally, since she can't climb ladders, and she does help you fight the monsters. So for all her faults, she can be an asset at times. Eileen represents the mother reborn. She does have some motherly qualities, but it seems like an odd choice since she was a little kid when Walter met her. I guess he stalked her into adulthood too. Yeah, still creepy. <laughs> oh, a treehouse of horror based on Silent Hill. That would be interesting. boy protected me from the man with the coat. <sighs> Who wouldn't accept an old doll from a weird creepy guy sitting on derelict course, stairs covered victims, with pulsating organ organic things? But the rest we don't learn that much about. Yeah, and my, uh... Ghosts. 
But the last victim before- In my uh, novelization, I had Henry refusing it. <laughs> because why the hell would he take it? It just makes no sense, except, you know, in video game logic. <laughs> yeah, that was a great scene in Guardians 2. There was a hole here, it's gone now for Eileen. I wish I'd thought to make that joke. <laughs> Hi, Ashtray. Homer as an overweight pyramid head, that would be funny. How was your Halloween? It was pretty good. I hung out at my mom's house and we watched, uh, we watched Dracula and Halloween, the original Halloween and the original Dracula and ate junk food. I haven't gotten to really hang out with my mom much uh, over the last couple of years, so. It was nice. Well, over the last year, I guess. No, a couple of years. <laughs> Sorry, I'm... Pfft. Time has no meaning to me anymore. <laughs> Eileen was a better partner than Maria, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people think he's a Wobie. You mean Walter? Eh, he's got a tragic past, but yeah, the fact that he's a freaking murderer <laughs> kind of kind of ruins that for me maybe Walter has that low of an opinion on women that he thinks they're promiscuous even as kids could be Walter's definitely misogynistic Yeah, I didn't even think about uh, I didn't even think about that Guardian spoiler since it was you know that movie came out a few years ago. I've seen it I don't know how many times. Silent Hill re reviews. <laughs> As in, I should do that, or that's what I'm doing right now. I've considered doing like follow up videos on some of these ones where I've learned things about them since since I made them, but. I don't know if I'll ever do it. All the great horror stories start by getting a doll from some person. <laughs> That's true. <clears throat> I'm so dumb, I bet I would have taken the doll in real life. <laughs> uh, yeah, in real life I might be dumb enough to do it too. I'd be like, we wouldn't hurt his feelings. Always watch the original Halloween. It's my tradition. It's a good tradition. <clears throat> Given the misogyny at play with him, the exacerbated myth misogyny with most cults and the fact that she's a minority in America and Walter's white. Heh. <laughs> yeah, Walter White. That may well be a factor. Yeah, that's true too. Stall carries a terrible curse, but it comes with a free Frogurt. <laughs> the Frogurt is also cursed. <laughs> hmm. I haven't watched Bram Stoker's Dracula in ages. I, I watched it once and I think it just didn't quite click with me, but Maybe it's one of those movies I ought to watch another time. Give it another chance. <coughs> Walter, you may want to husband him up, but he sure will cut you up. Oh, hi, Antoine. I think that's your first, your first comment. Ghost watches fake, fake TV special of the BBC investigating a haunted house and people thought it was real at the time. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Um, Craig Charles was in that. A friend had me watch it and it is pretty good. Oh yeah, Train to Busan. I haven't seen that, but I've been spoiled on the ending. It looks like a really good movie. A Blood Red Sky is another movie I keep meaning to watch. <clears throat> Die Hard on a Plane with Vampires. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right going by what I've heard. Uh, what other characters in the games did you want to play from the perspective of? Um, I can't think of any off the top of my head. <clears throat> A 
We'll have to see what a psychiatrist would say about Silent Hill characterization. Yeah, same. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people would like to see me do more Silent Hill videos, but I just don't know if I have it in me to do it. <laughs> Wanted to watch Halloween Kills, but couldn't get Peacock's paid service. I actually saw that one in an empty theater. It was pretty nice. Nice experience, I mean. The movie isn't nice. It's it's awesome, but I wouldn't call it nice. <laughs> <clears throat> What's your pleasure, sir, and Hansie with doll? <laughs> the Spanish version of Dracula is 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 the better film. I've heard that. I've heard that it's better in every way except for, you know, the lack of Bella Lugosi. I've heard that if you put Bella Lugosi in the Spanish version, you'd have like the perfect Dracula movie. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, that's right. You saw Halloween Kills in a drive-in while it was raining. Can't help but feel sympathy for Walter. He's an extremely unstable man, abused by a cult for years, <clears throat> abandoned by the ones who should have loved him when he needed it the most. Walter's life sucked. Yeah, indeed. <clears throat> Hammer Horrors Dracula. I haven't... Uh, I'm sure I've seen it at some point, but I don't think I've seen it all the way through. I, I probably should. So I haven't really seen Christopher Lee's version of Dracula too much. I've not seen Crimson Peak. I should have led with Craig Charles being in it. <laughs> That's okay. I could tell which one you were talking about by uh, the description there. <clears throat> Dina starts a Silent Hill podcast after this. <laughs> oh, boy. Here on YouTube, there's an animated video, Silent Hill Psychiatrist by... Shijo Tachi. Decent humor. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, I, I think I get it now, Ash. <laughs> I knew it had to be something like that. Getting silent with Dina. <laughs> I like the fact that theaters are empty for the most part, but don't like the reason why they're empty. Yeah, exactly. I liked it when there was almost no traffic. <laughs> that was nice. Didn't stop somebody from smacking into me, but... Renfield from the original Dracula is still creepy even after 80 years. I know, I love Renfield in that movie. Seems like a lot of Dracula movies either leave Renfield out or, like, really reduce his role. I don't know why. He was such a great character in that first movie. I'm trying to, like, get caught up on the chat so I can go to the restroom really quick, but, uh... I don't know when that's ever going to happen at this rate. <coughs> Hmm. I've never seen the In a Nutshell parodies. Keep laughing at Walter's name because him thinking apartment 302, a room with walls. Walter. Oh. <laughs> Hammer used a, var a lot of artistic license when it came to their Dracula movies, but I liked all the ones I watched. That's cool. Oh, that's right. Michael Goff was in there. It was in some of the Hammer films. I think that's why Tim, Tim uh, 
Tim Burton cast him as a Alfred. Cinemas reopening in this part of Australia are bringing in audiences, though some movies get lesser crowds than others. Yeah, it could be that we saw it on, like, a Monday morning. That might partly be why it was empty. I wanted to see it on opening night, but we were going to be going to my mom's house uh, a couple days later, and I didn't want to accidentally, you know, catch something and give it to her. Turned out there was no one in the theater anyway, and we did go, so it might have been fine, but we didn't know at the time. Hi, Sebastian. <clears throat> Yeah, Michael Goff was a great Alfred. <laughs> Everyone quit and let her catch up, LOL. <laughs> That's never going to happen. Renfield in the book was nothing but a Dracula detector. The Lugosi film expanded on his role somewhat. Mm. Yeah, I've never read the book, obviously, so... <clears throat> If anyone wants a horror comic recommendation, American Vampire from Vertigo. Stephen King worked on an early story arc. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, Michael Caine was also good. Renf oh, right. I need to see Dracula dead and loving it. <laughs> I've, heard, I've actually heard some good things about that movie. Boy, there have been a lot of Alfreds over the years, haven't there? Well, there have been a lot of bat, bat, Batmen, too. <laughs> Batmans. <laughs> Keep talking. Dina won't be able to go to the bathroom. <laughs> uh, speaking of Michael Goff, I recently saw Legend of Hell House with Roddy McDowell. I didn't realize Michael Goff had an uncredited role in that movie. He also has a really brief role in um, the, the version of The Christmas Carol where George C. Scott plays Scrooge. Like, Michael Goff has a really brief part in that. Is one of the guys trying to collect money from him in the beginning and then again at the end. <laughs> oh, Special Iron keeps commenting about not commenting. <laughs> That's okay. You watch Silence of the Lambs if you want. Still don't trust going back to the cinemas now, but I miss them like crazy. Yeah, I didn't for a long time, but like I said, when I went, it was there was literally only one other guy in the theater, and he was sitting way in the back. He watches the Dina video or else it gets the hose again. <laughs> I have to watch the Bram Stoker Dracula with Keanu Reeves. <laughs> God damn it, Special Iron, you aren't helping. <laughs> Batmans. <laughs> mm. Oh, there's over 30, 30 people watching again. Cool. Yeah, that happened last week. For some reason, people like this shit. <laughs> Obi-Wan was the best Dracula. Okay, I'm caught up now. I'll be right back.
Okay. <laughs> to get into cinemas here, you need to show proof of double vaccination by app. That's good, actually. I like that. I wish more places would do that. What time is it here? It's uh, just just after 4 o'clock, 4 p.m. <clears throat> I missed the cat quote. Oh, well. <laughs> Come back, Dina. <laughs> uh. Tara's, oh, is Tara behind me? Oh, yeah, I see her. There she is. <clears throat> What's she watching? She looks fast asleep to me. Halloween outfit I wore scared the very cute, scared my very cute friend, and he said I looked like a cotton candy demon on acid because I was wearing just black, bright blue, and bright pink, and scared him a lot. Okay. I don't think you heard Lee unless he came downstairs while I was in the bathroom. Hi, Hershey. Yes, more classic Dina. <laughs> <laughs> biggest oh shit moment was when I realized every other apartment in the building had more rooms than Henry's apartment yep lean to that bit with a dead body behind the wall yeah <laughs> yes I'm on the west coast California to be more specific don't forget to put my clocks back tomorrow I know <laughs> Yeah, it'll be easier for people people across the pond to remember uh, when my videos start. 11 at night here and some jerks are still letting off fire. Letting off fireworks? What? Oh, Tara was staring at you guys for a minute. Okay. I wonder if she can see the chat move. Maybe it gets her attention. How would Dahlia, Walter, Harry, Alex, etc. take COVID? I have no idea. Mm, coffee sounds good. I had coffee earlier. This is the Dina zone. <laughs> Remember when you did the Twitch stream yesterday and Tara was on the back of your chair? She was staring at us over your shoulder. <laughs> That's funny. I never saw that. Okay, back to watching this. For Cynthia does show up in a way, mostly through the notes from him that you find throughout the apartment. I'm talking about Joseph Schreiber, who lived in the ah, apartment Joseph. before Henry. Aside from the notes, we also hear some things from Richard and Eileen, who knew about him, but probably How many horror movies had a cat level, scare too many? Like our protagonist. It's the guy who lived in your apartment before you. A journalist. Dolly would be anti-vax. About six months before you... Oh, right, Guy Fox Knight, I forgot. I forgot you were in the UK. Tomorrow's daylight savings for me. Up in his room and for the U.S. Out. Yeah, he was doing an investigation about a religious cult and a man named Walter Sullivan. He also wrote the famous Hope House article that you come across in Silent Hill 3 that turns out to be part of Walter's past. The game doesn't make it completely clear what his fate was, but clearly he was killed in some method. Because I have not heard of the channel J. Cart's art. Towards the end. It's him. AVP <laughs> had a penguin scare. Yeah, they did. <laughs> oh, wait. 
By the way, that sequence. I wanted to in the pause on Joseph game, for a second because you're actually Ryan, playing as Joseph there, not Henry. Funny. It is made to look like he died at the end, but death by ghost doesn't really fit with Walter's M.O. But who knows? Either way, he helps you out from beyond the grave. God, the, somebody did a parody uh, of this. It was like in, but it was like, um, well, not a parody. Someone did sort of a let's play, but in text form. Anyway, when they referred to jo to Joseph as the man without textures, and when he says, uh, like, uh, you've done well to make it this far, and it's like, you did a good job getting this far with all those textures weighing you down. I don't know, maybe, I don't know if I'm doing it justice, but it was funny. Scary movie had a horse scare. Even now, this may not Alucard? Stop falling. If not, wherever you run, he will catch you. Oh, so he wasn't actually quartered while he was still alive. That's good. I mean, all things considered. So all of that brings us to yeah. Walter Sullivan. In some ways, he boils down to a typical serial killer. He could almost be called a spree killer or a mass murderer, but according to the research I did, he fits the description. Research of Eagles looked it up best. on Wikipedia. It's true. That's the extent of my research. Well, usually. he went to med school, which takes a certain amount of intelligence. So check. Speaking of that, it's not unusual for them to be doctors, but that's mostly for mercy killers. They tend to come from unstable families. Having no family is about as unstable as you can get. As children, they are often abandoned by their fathers and raised by domineering mothers. More like abandoned by both parents and raised by a domineering guardian of sorts, but close enough. Their families often have criminal, psychiatric, and alcoholic histories. Oh, Shriver's voiced no by idea, the same guy's Alucard. father does come okay. off like an abuser. Little crybaby. They were often abused by a family member. Again, a guardian. Check this one out. From an early age, many are intensely interested in voyeurism, which we don't actually witness Walter doing much, but it is one of the main themes in yeah, the Yeah, Joseph Schreiber. Many are fascinated by fire starting. Don't know if it's a fascination, but he's not above using fire as a murder weapon. <laughs> They're involved in sadistic late, activity or torturing like animals. That. Well, he did destroy a pet store full of animals. No details are given, but the newspaper article describes it as butchering, so it had to have been pretty brutal. They mostly grew up in poverty. He mainly lived alternately in a cabin and a concrete cell, then became homeless. They were frequently bullied as children. Big check. Anyway, I that scene with the horse on the ring was in the ring was nuts. I, I, I watched found it the ring. Interesting uh, how much he fits the description of like a real last life week, serial I think. killers and thought I'd share. Team Silent did their homework as usual. So here's a quick rundown of the history of Walter Sullivan. As a newborn baby, he was abandoned by his parents in their apartment, which would later be the apartment of Joseph Schreiber and after that Henry Townsend. Since the apartment was the first thing he saw, it became imprinted on him, and he saw it as his mother, probably more like a second womb. But he was taken away from his mother and taken to a hospital, which he apparently <laughs> remembers as being pretty scary. Which makes sense for someone so young, who just wanted to be with his mother, who was nowhere to be found. Just isn't the Silent Hill game without a hospital level. <laughs> he was handed over to an orphanage that was unfortunately run by the cult from the previous games. Possibly a different sect, but with similar beliefs. Their goal is to revive a god who will destroy the world... Of course. ...and kill all the non-believers before leading <gasps> yeah. the believers to paradise. Of course he was abused. It's the first step to brainwashing. A common form of abuse was to lock up the kids in a concrete tower where they Dressed possibly killed someone... Dressed as a hot someone, dog. Oh, that's so Walter cute. Being ...unreliable narrator. Either way, the cultists went out of their way to make Walter's life absolutely miserable. I think Claudia's rants from Silent Hill 3 sum up their motives pretty well. Thank you for nurturing God. Wikipedia, best of all academic sources. Well, it's the most convenient. <laughs> it's time for mankind to be released from the shackles of sin which bind them. What's worse is that hers is the romanticized version of the cult's release. Take away her intention to do the right thing in the end, and it gets really dark. Walter eventually learned that he could take the subway to find his mother. 60 in fact, he FPS was encouraged by here. the cultists, <laughs> likely by Dahlia Gillespie herself, to go and do this as part of their brainwashing. They fill his head with ideas about how horrible the outside world is, then they let him see for himself. And Not he like sees they need it to exactly the way they hospital scary, yeah. It helps that he perpetually ran into Walter people Sullivan who treated him badly. In the subway station, in the city, 
and the apartment building. Meanwhile, the cultists made him learn the 21 sacraments and descent of the Holy Mother scriptures, making him believe that he would revive his mother, but instead he's reviving the cult's god. And he was too steeped in his own delusions to realize this. I mean, he thought his it's mother not was as an apartment, for God's as his sake. reputation makes it out to be. Or yeah, I agree. he chose to believe that because it sounded better than the truth. It depends, that really. the only people he had in the world abandoned him to a bunch of abusers who were turning him into a monster. It sucks to be Walter. Once he was old enough to leave the orphanage, he went into studying medicine. Hmm. Ugh. I think I made a comment about something like this in a previous Game Den episode. There's just something so unsettling about, about a deranged, deranged doctor. doctor. Something, something about, about all that all knowledge, that of, human knowledge of human anatomy being, being put, put in the wrong hands. hands. Yeah. So why did he go into medicine? Is this the first time well, I referenced that? The way I said that, it sounded like, uh, as much precision I don't know. As possible. But who knows? Remember this scene where we see him operating on a woman's corpse? What is he doing there? Is he removing her uterus? Is he performing some kind of abortion? One theory is that he studied medicine so he could learn how to perform abortions so he could save babies from having to go through what he did. I don't know about that. He seems a little more self-centered than that to me. Another is that he just got his kicks from dissecting bodies. Particularly women, I'm sure. Sure sounds like he's having fun. Ugh, yeah. Take a good look, Walter Sullivan fangirls. While you're fantasizing about comforting the poor Wooby, he's fantasizing about cutting you open. Yeah, and here's something about Walter Sullivan I've noticed. He's misogynistic. Now, when when you boil it down, Silent Hill 4 is the story of a guy desperately trying to go outside of an apartment versus a guy desperately trying young. to get inside that apartment. <laughs> it's the true. Nearly beaten to death. Now, his other victims probably suffer more, but these two take more physical energy to carry out. More rage. It makes sense, considering that just about all the women he's dealt with have treated <laughs> dressed a chocolate lab Namely as a candy bar, mother, that's cute. Cynthia, and maybe even Dahlia Gillespie. Not as directly as with the others, but it could be that deep down he knows he's being manipulated. And no, that is not a justification to wow, slash him with Wow, two rant alert alerts in one video. does not mean gay. But I digress. As I've said before, I regret saying that a little bit because it comes across as a little bit homophobic, but I, I didn't mean it that way at the time. It was more like, uh... It was more like any time, any um, slashing of Henry and Walter is kind of icky because, you know, it's usually kind of rapey. <laughs> Not that I've read a lot of it, but I've come across a little bit of fan art and yeah. Victims are people who have wronged Walter in some way. With the one glaring exception being Eileen, who was the only one to ever show him any kindness. She's second to the last I think it's victim. one of the first times, yeah. One has to wonder if she's basically the final Probably test. is. Only if he kills and condemns the only person he ever cared about. Some twisted about, way Henry and Walter are eerily similar, but it's mostly due to speculation like because that. Henry's entire story is Clearly made, he but couldn't bring through clues, Henry purposefully death, closes so himself so off from people, yeah. A set of rotating spikes. Which can come from trauma like or something else Again, entirely. whether she suffers this fate or not is up to you. And if you're thinking of letting her die just to see if it looks cool, don't bother. It happens off camera. How is every Silent Hill hero so calm when fighting the monsters? So I've mostly been talking about Walter when he was alive, and the undead Walter that you have to deal with. The, the age-old philosophy of saving people by killing them. Yeah. Are you Walter Sullivan? Fangirls would still be glad Walter Sullivan would be inside him in some way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have a name. Oh, See, Walter I don't know, maybe Dahlia is chewing gum? I have no idea. Number 11 of the 21 sacraments. But once he resurrected himself, he ended up being split <laughs> down the Rainbow spawn, I like that term. Arms. One is of the inhuman... Yeah, I've only had like maybe one or two people say that that, that, that comment the rubbed them the wrong way. Maybe it was just one person, I don't know. The other know. is a child who represents... I think it was just one person, I'm confusing it with something else. Looked at that age. Which is the good one and which is the bad one? Seems obvious at first glance. <laughs> the big one that can kill you is evil, and the little cute one is good. But consider that there are three cases where we see little Walter interacting with another character. Jasper scares him, Richard threatens him, and he just plain dislikes DeSalvo, but we don't know why at first. And that character ends up dying horrifically. <laughs> More in rainbow the case spawn. Of Richard, the kid is right there in the room with him and doesn't seem all that phased by what's going on. In fact, it helps create a false feeling that Eileen dies too right after her attack because once again, the kid's right there. But as we find out later, the boy protected Walter also the chopped up one of the little kids he murdered. Yeah, it was that's true. Walter who apparently stopped Big Walter from killing her. Silent Pyramid has an interesting theory. Little Walter, even though he seems all cute and nice, is mainly self-centered. And Dressed Big Walter is mainly just there to do what he wants. He 
He did say Vileen, but it could have been more along the lines of don't kill this When Dina one, gets I mad, she gets mad. <laughs> it's not that little Walter says words like I, me, and my about 15 times, along with a lot of other interesting little details to back up his opinion. But granted, little Walter shows a lot more humanity than Big Walter, who only has two. I like the theory that little Walter is more is the evil one. <laughs> or Out of was. the two. But at least he has those. Either way, they're two sides of the same coin. But what it comes down to is that it's not as black and white as one being good. And I think the other it's because there weren't any pairings, so it's people were a bit desperate, over desperate. Yeah, it could be. The twenty-one sacraments. What are the twenty-one sacraments? Don't worry. You'll know soon enough. I have not played well, Dying Light. Let's go and see Mother. <laughs> let's go and see Mother. <laughs> it's so creepy. That's true, Walter supposedly does feel bad about killing the two kids. In Silent Hill games, Rainbow Spawn Unite. I love the term Rainbow Spawn, character. I'm never gonna get over that. And since Walter Sullivan is really the main character of Silent Hill 4, this game is no exception. Meet Silent Misogyny Hill equals gay is an odd assumption Despite that's still being a survival horror made. staple, hmm. they always represent something in a Silent Hill game. That's Usually interesting. I don't think I knew that. Dogs. It is a pretty common fear. In this case, it's Walter's fear of dogs. Apparently triggered by the pet the store. The circumcision the war of Walter the Sullivan in the game. The, apartment. the pet store owner, Steve Garland, had a big scary dog. Also, he yelled at Walter when he knocked over a cage. Not surprisingly, Garland ended up being one of the 21 sacraments. <laughs> Walter leveled the place with a submachine gun and killed all the animals. The dogs in this game are pretty unique. They have long tongues that they appear to use as straws to suck up blood and whatever else out of their victims. They also have no obvious eyes, rat-like <laughs> snouts, and they make jaguar-like noises. They're also lazy and easy to sneak up on. Just <laughs> don't let them gang up on you. I'm not sure what the wall men represent. No sexy they're nurses, how is it a Silent Hill game? So maybe confinement. All I know is that they're very Cynthia loud. Cynthia X giant Eileen head. <laughs> one swipe and are a serious pain in the ass. Walter creepy now. They come Walter. in two forms: a human-sized one that Walter takes on the color and texture of whatever himself. wall they come out of, and a huge one that appears to be grafted to some kind of framework that hangs from the ceiling. An entire room full of these makes up what is essentially a boss battle, where you need to figure out which one is the real one. When you hit Council it, they all react. Geeks, I'll keep that and when in it mind. dies, so do the rest of them. Monkey men. God, I hate the monkey men. They're everywhere God, in the I city. Do. They're nasty looking, and their noises are so repetitive, you'll be hearing them in your sleep. Yeah, the sound effects in this game could have been better. I don't mind that this is a stock sound so much as it's only one of two sounds they make. It's short, and it loops over and over and over and over. Anyway, they represent humans in Walter's world. Yeah, Walter's basically an enemy to all living things. <laughs> enemy to Speaking all living things. Speaking of bad sound effects, <laughs> I mean, considering their abdomens are hollowed out, maybe it's the sound of air escaping when they get hit there. So a noise that sounded like a belch might have been the right level of disgusting, Kids by nature but... are selfish, yeah. Yeah, this is just silly after a while. By the way, these are not nurses, despite how people like to call them that because they show up in the hospital. They're patients. Notice that they're a deformed version of the woman we see Walter operating on. With how big they are and their distorted faces, they're pretty disturbing. <laughs> the sound to look they make at. when you stomp on them is kind too of funny. Bad the noise too, they like make totally black. kills that. Excuse you. Walter Sullivan himself is essentially another monster. Well, he's an enemy anyway. He shows up repeatedly during the second half of the game and just makes life hell. I remember the first time I was in the forest, and after I went through a door, I heard it open and close again behind the me. The way the and voice actress says, "Mother, I know." Walter. Scared the crap out of me. That is and such a good shot. On, I've used that shot of Walter a few times because, like, he you hear the gate open and then he's there, but like you have to be really quick to to look at him, especially because he's shooting at you. You don't want to get hit. But... I was being chased by Walter. That is such a good shot. <laughs> Although I think uh, I think later on I added some contrast to it because it does it does look very gray. Scared the crap out of me, and from that point on, you never know when he's gonna show up. Oops. Surprise, Cockbang! By the way, he has this laugh that is absolutely chilling. <laughs> that little uh, sound bite was from. Uh, the best for last. Was from uh, Team America: World Police. 
Or the most fucked up for last, anyway. The double heads. No legs, just a torso and a pair of arms with hands that they You've squeezed on. all the ketchup the out of me, of burger. <laughs> kind, covers the rest except for a pair of blind infant faces. Their eyes may be closed, but they see you. When you're too far away to attack, they'll point at you and whisper, Receiver. <laughs> What's even worse is that the trailer shows them cooing and screaming like babies. For some reason, the game replaced that with some generic-sounding grunts yeah. and growls that don't really suit their appearance, which is a shame. I think the Doubleheads are just about the most disturbing monster in any Silent Hill game. Yep. They represent two of Walter's victims, number seven and eight, young siblings, Billy and Miriam Locaine, who Walter apparently hacked to pieces with an axe. And they're the only victims who don't appear as ghosts in Walter's world. The leading theory seems to be that Walter feels some guilt over killing children, so they manifest as something more disturbing to look at than the ghosts. Speaking of ghosts, this game gives you yet another mind screw. Not only does every single person you run into before Eileen die, but they all come back as ghosts that want to kill Favorite you Silent badly Hill for ship. some reason. Henry and Eileen. And will come for me. after you until you pin them with a sword. Obvious of if you've read my story, my uh, novelization. Oh yeah, I forgot about when Cynthia first shows up. Of course, the only one we see Henry react to is Cynthia's. She has kind of a grudge thing going on with her super long hair and how she crawls and slithers on the she ground. She looks like an Asian ghost. Jasper is perpetually on fire, and he's a bitch to kill if you don't have a saint medallion. I kind of went into a panic here and accidentally selected an unlit torch. Munchies when are the I meant worst enemies in survival horror. See, yeah, it's my from dumbass mistake. Zero. I haven't played but that it one. It would have been easier so to avoid if I was enemy. able to pause the game while changing weapons. Just saying. Ship James Sunderland and getting therapy. <laughs> Games need more the belchy sound effects. Is really creepy. He appears to be really bloated and dances around with a huge smile on his face like he's happy as he sings the Descent of the Holy Mother scriptures. He also tends to float around really high right up until he's about to attack. Richard isn't too remarkable looking. He carries a pipe and can teleport, which is a serious pain. He also makes a creepy croaking sound. Again, kind yeah, of unintentionally got you into Walter's headspace, yeah. Then there's God, the final boss. Getting behind on the chat. Okay, well, the final boss is Walter, but there's a little more involved here than just fighting Walter. First, you have to attack this thing. And what is it? Rejected I guess Walter Captain thinks Planet it's his Miller mother, confirmed. but actually it's the cult's god. Some things don't add up, though. One thing that always struck me is, where did Walter's corpse go? Did it fall into the hole and somehow form this thing? I'm not sure exactly how that would work, but then again... This is Silent Hill. But anyway, Walter is insanely powerful. And some of the uh, some of the parts of this segment, like Linkara, uh, had some ideas he told me about. Originally, Linkara was supposed to. I don't know if we were ever. I don't know if we were actually going to do a full on. Uh, what do you call it? Crossover thing, or if he was uh, just going to do a cameo. But he had interest in being in this video, and it never. He, uh, he ended up not having time to do it, but he ended up telling me basically what he wanted to say about the game, so... And he said I could, uh, I could say that myself if I wanted. So I don't remember which part of it, but it was some, some part of this segment about the, uh, final boss. One theory is that the god is actually protecting him, which makes sense. The god wants to exist, after all, yeah, I think Walter this part. is helping it along, so... Like the cult, it's only looking out for its own interests. No love for Walter. There's one it's monster protecting who Walter because it wants to be born. Is, uh... So thank God I don't have to put up with that stupid box head showing Oops. up. Oops. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Oh, I'm Thursday, so sorry for this bit, Thursday, you guys. Friday, Saturday, Sunday comes again. <sighs> so there's one character I haven't talked about. I made a He's rape joke. Ah, uh, that's I'm... awful. Uh, the joke is that Pyramid Head rapes the other monsters, so I kind of, you know, that's supposed to be the reason for it, but yeah, I wouldn't do that now. I kind of like that Silent Hill 4 went in the other direction, uses patients instead of nurses or doctors, yeah. I ship every one of these games X happiness and peace of mind. <laughs> I like that. I 
I know some people still find the patient noise creepy. I mean, I think it would work if it was just like something kind of similar, but a little less like a little less like a belch, just like the that kind of idea, but not sounding literally like a belch. People ship Pennywise with the Babadook. I think I've heard that before. Eddie X Pizza. <laughs> I can see a parody where they point at you and whisper racist. <laughs> Cherubs in Doom 3. I think I played Doom 3 a tiny bit, but I don't remember it too well. Nurses and Pyramid Head should have stayed in Silent 2. Well, I think nurses are fine in general, just not the exact same fucking nurses. <laughs> Shiva's a glow wrestler. Hi, Jason. I always think of that soundbite in Captain America and the Winter Soldier when Bucky is about to shoot Black Widow and Cap runs in to engage him. <laughs> Surprise, cuck fags. Uh. Baby monster gives you nightmares. Yeah, it's really disturbing. Onryo is the Asian ghost you were thinking of. Yeah, I didn't know the term, but yeah, it's a typical... Typical type of Asian ghost. Silent Hill is about torture and that never lets itself lent itself to romance. I don't know, I did a little bit of shipping in my <laughs> Silent Hill 4 on novelization. <laughs> Hispanic women change ethnicity when they die. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought of that. James Sunderland X holes. Billy was killed in one hit. Marion was chopped up. Yeah, I thought I remembered. Yeah, that sounds right. James Sunderland Sunderland would make a great captain for Pikmin since the second game is a bunch of holes to jump down. <laughs> Colt's God looks like someone inflated Gollum and glued him to the wall. <laughs> And the CGI, sh the shitty CGI wall Freddy Krueger for the 2010 remake. <laughs> you need a silver bullet for DeSalvo and Richard. Yeah, I think I remember that. And his last word is mom, yeah. Considering that Konami is Japanese, it makes sense that one of the ghosts would take inspiration from Onryo, like Sadako or Samara. Yeah, it's just that Silent Hill normally references Western horror, so it, it seems a little out of place, but not in a bad way. Oh, thank you, Special Iron. <sighs> yes, that was 100% a rape joke. <laughs> yeah, ho hopefully Hulk Hogan <laughs> makes it <laughs> a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> James Bond and Henry. I think that's coming up. Heard a theory that Henry is autistic explains his underreactions. That I never thought about that before. Actually, I think I maybe I remember someone saying maybe Henry's on the spectrum, but yeah, that's interesting. Hmm. <clears throat> what was as in what was the rape joke? The thing where um the thing where box head grabs Oh, thank you. Um Jason. Thank you, Jason. Oh, I've been forgetting to read the super chat. Sorry. Uh, George didn't leave a comment. For the therapy and box head lawyers <laughs> was Special Iron's comment. And Shiva loves Cybercat <laughs> from Jason. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. I kept, I've been forgetting to read the... Uh... I'm caught up now, though. Yeah, uh, yeah, the bit where uh, box head grabs my shoulder and then I cut away to Hulk Hogan. To not show the horrors of what's happening. It cuts back to me with my hair and makeup messed up. That was a rape. That was, the implication is that he raped me because he got mad about something I said. I was saying something about thank God Pyramid Head isn't in this game. And then Boxhead got mad about it. 
Yeah, I'm just glad I got an excuse to use that Hulk Hogan clip because I fucking love that thing. It's for some Japanese commercial. <laughs> Always looked like you got your clothes mixed up while kicking Boxhead's ass. Yeah, but I have a traumatized look on my face, though. I looked a little surprised. <laughs> Farting patient mod. <laughs> They aren't exactly the same moot nurses. They got continuously more cleavage. That's true. <laughs> I have memories of the internet tossing rape jokes like it was nothing when Silent Hill was still popular. Yeah, it was kind of a product of its time, too. Which doesn't make it okay, just gives it context. At least the nurses in three were different, even when they kept some sex appeal, yeah. Uh, I don't... Doctor Who? What about Doctor Who? I'm on the autism spectrum, and I always thought Henry was very relatable, which is unfortunate, considering he's very bland. <laughs> That's interesting. Boxhead's lawyers. <laughs> Uh. Oh, hi, Massey. Parallelogram head. <laughs> I know somebody did a drawing of dodecahedron head. I think Henry is re in relatable in a way because he's so friggin' awkward. Yeah. <laughs> He's that kind of character where I always hope I don't come across like that, but I probably do. <laughs> hey, if it's possible for Michael Bay to force a romance love triangle in a Pearl Harbor movie, anything can happen. <laughs> Parallelozoid head. Oh my god. Hmm. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, I always appreciate donations. Thanks, everybody. Since Boxhead is playing by t being played by 2D Lee, parallelogram head would actually make sense. That's true. She freaks me out out of all the ghosts because she's so out of place. She seems to be suffering the most. Yeah, that too. Well, that's okay, Ashtray. I know not everybody can, uh, not everybody can donate. In what part of the game does it suggest Henry is autistic? No particular part. People are just talking about his behavior in general. I always thought it was him beating you up. I mean, it could be that, too. If you prefer. <laughs> Box said, I wanted to be in this game. We had a contract. Uh... You can be pulled in an unexpected fight win and still be traumatized. <laughs> Okay, well, look at it however you want. The look you had seemed more pissed off and traumatized to me. Really? I have not played the Batman Arkham games. Boxhead should make a return, perhaps as a small cameo or something. Yeah, well, I've moved even further away from, like, skits and stuff than I was already. So I don't see that really happening. Oh, hi, Teeny Tara! 
Oh, did you? Yeah, I guess you probably did. I remember. Actually, I do remember somebody saying dodecahedron head. But yeah, there actually is one somewhere on the internet. I, I mean, I. It was years ago that I saw it, but I still remember it. Oh, thank you, Lunar. Flexes with two dollars. <laughs> hey, I mean, it's two dollars I didn't have before, so. Nothing like strong piping hot coffee fresh from the stove. No milk, no water. Just six shots in a mug that will keep me going all day. Wow, no milk even? Oh, thanks again, Jason. Uh, where is it? Oh, thoughts on Halloween kills. Um, I, I basically loved it. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know what to say about it since I've only seen it once, but, uh, it takes a little while to get my thoughts together all the way. But yeah, I, I generally loved it. Um, um, the only like legitimate criticism I've seen of it that I kind of agree with is that someone said that there was a lot going on in it and not all the plot threads are, uh, really come together very well. And that's legit, but a lot of, uh, things people are saying about it is just like, I don't, I don't get it. I like feel like somehow some of them saw a different movie than I did. A <laughs> fine thing about this signed document, it was never notarized. <laughs> I feel like if I saw Pyramid Head, it would be all... I would be all petty and call him Conehead and run off running like the gang in Scooby-Doo while he's chasing me down. <laughs> I called him Conehead. Oh, thank you, Sebastian. <laughs> for my trauma. <laughs> also, am I the only one who thinks Henry from Silent Hill inspired Light Yagami's look in Death Note? I don't actually know which one came first, but yeah, they do look similar. You reading this, Lee? We want box head. I'm sure Lee would be more than willing to do it. I just... It's hard fitting stuff like that into my videos these days. Hi, Crikeston. I have arrived. This is my first time watching a stream from you. What's up? <laughs> Not much. Welcome to the stream. It's getting super late here. I wish I could stay, but I need some sleep. Glad I was able to rewatch part of these videos with you guys, though. This chat is nice by everyone. Okay, Johannes, thanks for stopping by. Have a good evening. Meanwhile, Henry is staring at us thinking, just play the damn video. <laughs> How about Texahed Texahedron head, the 24-sided complex polyhedron? Oh my god. Do cats like sleeping in Box Head's head? <laughs> Probably. I wouldn't be surprised if one of the cats slept in that at some point. Cat butt cameo. No. She's wandered off already. I don't even know. Oh, she's looking out the window. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm getting a lot of donations. Thanks, everybody. It's most Silent Hill levels are rusty. The heroes are going to need tetanus shots. That's so true. I have a great idea for a Silent Hill weapon, possibly also a Resident Evil weapon. A boxing glove on a trellis. <laughs> Looked up Dotegahedron head and it still exists. <laughs> Wielding a great piano. Let me look that up. Oh, nothing's coming up. Oh, is that it? Is this the one I saw? This could be the one I saw. Oh yeah, he is wielding a piano, oddly enough. Yeah, here's the one that came up for me. Oops. That might be the one I remember. I'm not sure. Damn, I got another. Hang on a second. 
Thanks, Jason. Please finish It Chapter 2 review. I know, I know. It's hard getting myself to watch that movie again because I didn't like it. <laughs> I do want to cover it someday. Thought it was a shame that Laurie hadn't had to do much in that movie. Yeah, that's that's also fair. The evil di does dies the the evil dies tonight bit was a little overdone, but the mob mentality theme paid off. Yeah, I think so too. I just keep seeing people going, they were stupid in that movie. And it's like, yeah, that's kind of the point. They were making a, a point with it. <laughs> Halloween Kills was very uneven, but okay and all. Felt like they were really scrapping it together. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I just, I love how the kills were done. Like, they introduced these characters, and they, they're they really likable and quirky, and then they die so horribly, and I always feel so bad. I always feel so bad when they die because I actually care about them. The irony is that Paul Rudd played a more badass version of Tommy Doyle. <laughs> Uh, with Halloween Kills, while I love the brutality of the kills, I admire them going back to the pure evil angle, the character handling of characters like Karen, Marion, and Tommy felt off. Hmm, really? I will say this, I like Halloween Kills more than the Rob Zombie remake. <laughs> That's good. I agree with that. I think I missed another thingy. Oh, thanks, Mad Morpheus. Don't have a clever message, so instead have a little bit of moolah. <laughs> I appreciate it, thank you. I read somewhere they tried to get Paul Rudd for the part of Tommy, but he wasn't available because he was shooting Ghostbusters at the time. Could be. Okay, Hershey, thanks for stopping by. You're probably already gone. Pyramid Head puts his helmet down for two minutes to get some air, comes back and finds a cat lying in it. <laughs> and all he can say is, well... <laughs> I like that, uh... Yes, Neo, I know you don't like Halloween kills. You don't need to talk about it every stream. I'm pretty sure that was you, anyway. Uh, how do you say that? I'm guessing it's not Quiltro. Is it Ke Keeltro? Anyway, thank you. Imagine the sound effect if he did an overhead swing with that piano on James's head. Didn't mind Laura being in the hospital. She was more physically damaged than she'd been in prior movies, and she's not the only protagonist of Haddonfield. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it gave them a chance to focus a little more on um, Karen and uh, uh, the granddaughter. I suddenly forgot her name. I love the new movie, but in the horror comedy way. Mm, oh, well. Oh, the new It movie. Right, right, right. Yeah, I, I can I can believe that. Heard that a bunch of characters in Halloween Kills obsessively held on to the idiot ball. Yeah, kind of, but there was there was a theme there. It, it makes sense in context, I thought. Script was great, but this kills were great, but the script was a little rough. Meh. Nah. <laughs> okay, thanks, Jason. I mean, thanks for stopping by. can imagine the boss music against that version of Pyramid Head would be The Entertainer by Joplin. It number two, better or worse than Silent Hill. Oh my god, I don't think I could really compare the two because they're such different movies. Rob Zombie remake was just a cliche Rob Zombie movie. Yeah, I haven't seen very many Rob Zombie movies, but it, it really didn't bring anything good to the table in my opinion. I don't know why some people like it so much. I guess those people just really like Rob Zombie's style or whatever. I'm not trying to be snarky, I'm just saying. Hi, Alexander. Catwoman content. Yeah, I was wondering why you were talking about Catwoman. <laughs> really enjoyed Halloween Kills, but I'm kind of worried about Halloween ends. I wouldn't say that I'm worried, but I am curious how they're going to end it.
I definitely don't think Rise of Skywalker was worse than Catwoman. There are very few movies I would say are worse than Catwoman. Like, I don't remember any scenes in Rise of Skywalker where you can't tell what the fuck is going on because of all the cuts. <laughs> like, it may not be a good movie, but at least it's competent. Safe head from evil within. Yeah, I've heard of that. Seemed like he'd just be a pyramid head ripoff, but he ended up being his own character. That's cool. Okay, I'm just going to start skimming over these comments because I, I need to get caught up and so I can get back to watching this. He looks nothing like Michael Myers. Well, most of them don't know what Michael Myers looked like or, or they were kids when they saw him. Hi, baby girl. Don't feel like Rob Zombie style fits in Halloween, yeah. Or belongs in Halloween, yeah, I agree with that. Well, that's true. They probably weren't as bad as Resurrection, I'll give them that. <laughs> Spoken like a person who's never heard of pure flicks. Rob Zombie's just not just good at doing his original stories, not so much already existing franchises. I mean, I haven't really seen any Rob Zombie movies, but from what I've seen of them, he has a very, you know, like distinctive style, and yeah, it really doesn't fit with Halloween at all. Oh, thanks again, Jason. Jason, I, ne <laughs> I nearly said Jason. I nearly combined both of your names. Jason. <laughs> Shiva versus Catwoman. Who wins? I don't know. Do they have from the movies? I take it. I wouldn't really want either of them to win, honestly. <laughs> the killer Paul Bunyan was an odd part in part two and kind of funny. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know you're talking about It part two, yeah. It chapter two. Apparently Halloween Ends will be set four years after the last one. It's going to be a coming-of-age story. That's interesting. I didn't, I mean, I, Rise of Skywalker was flawed. I didn't think it was as horrible as other people do. Um... Thank you, Sebastian. Will they... They will be making it Chapter 3? Uh, this is the first time hearing of that. I don't know if I believe you. Yes, Pure Flix makes Christian movies. Pretty much all of which are bad. <laughs> New Dune movie was better than all the prequels and see uh, If you say so, I didn't see it, so... I'll take Rise of Skywalker anytime over Solo. Haven't seen Solo yet. I've heard good and bad things. You're laughing your ass off. Oh, it's because I because I called you Jasif. <laughs> okay, back to the video. Fuck. Ironically, he's the character you play as, Henry Townsend. Even translated memories in the instruction manual don't have much to say about him. There's one of two reasons. A, Team Silent got really lazy with this one, or B, he's meant to be an avatar of sorts. About he's supposed character. to be the player. Which would sort of explain why he doesn't talk much. Maybe you're supposed to mentally fill in the responses as he stands around and listens to the other person talk. <laughs> only problem Thanks, with the second Iron. option is that the game is too Would you people please stop really giving donations to Dina? She's trying to play your videos. The only choices you can make in this game are a handful of things that affect which of the four endings you get. You don't really get to mold him as a character. 
If this is what they were going for, I really wish they had drawn out some of the conversations and let you choose what Henry says in response, like you can do with Alex in Homecoming. You gotta be shitting me. Ooh, that's so way too dark. Know about Henry? I started using well, a different. Well, the only concrete uh, things I can think of is that he's a photographer. A while. Whether amateur or professional is clear, but his work. I is mean, good same clip, but from a different wall. source. And that he's been to Silent Hill. Halloween was not Other improved by that, making the Myers family cliche hillbilly mess. Yeah, I know. The traumatic experience he's been through, and which ones were already there. Like, is he so quiet and withdrawn? Because yeah, I like he hearing the donation bell too. Or is he just shy? He has a kind of awkwardness to his body language. He kind of slouches and seems a bit clumsy, so I'm going to say he's shy. But it's really a combination of the two. I mentioned before that the scenes involving female victims are much more dramatic than the ones with male victims. It seems like Henry just cares more about them. I tend to chalk this up to Henry being the opposite of Walter, in that Walter hates women, where Henry has a lot of respect for them. <laughs> or maybe he's just the sort of yeah, guy who's pure flicks movies are terrible. comes across. That's kind of a running theme with the male leads in Silent Hill games. Harry's protective of Lisa and Sybil. James is off and on kind of protective. Of <laughs> okay, Maria. I'll stop. He seems to care about Angela. I think he <laughs> Thanks, would George. Her if she'd let him get within ten feet of her. And later, there's Travis with Alessa, somewhat. In the case of Silent Hill 4, I think the point is to make a contrast. The more Henry mourns the death or attack of Cynthia and Eileen, the more we realize how bad Walter's actions are. Solo is both good and bad. So Henry is shy, we'll never read and all he's the somewhat artistic, mortal. and caring. Though the latter's kind of hard to tell sometimes. I'll get to that in a minute. I think the game does a great disservice to his character by glossing over what he went through before the start of the game. All we get is a couple screenfuls of text telling us that he's lived in his apartment Alex for the years. sweet old foul mouth. Oh, and by the way, he got locked in somehow five days ago. I got a letter. Silent oh, Hill yeah. 2 actually started off in a similar way, but it's talking about how difference. it's sort of a we get to hear James kind of Silent Hill 4 kind of did telling words. instead of showing. And from time to time we're beginning. reminded through the dialogue of how much he misses his wife. I think handling Henry in a similar way would have gone a long way towards giving him better characterization. And that brings me to another reason why I think <laughs> Jesus. There are plenty of opportunities for him to get some dialogue in during the second half of the game, but he barely says a word to Eileen after the cutscene where they decide to stick together, aside from calling <laughs> her name a few times to get her attention. Eileen? 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 And frankly, when you have Eileen saying stuff, especially when she's sounding hysterical, Oh, that's right, because it's uh, because they're all super back, chats, it doesn't show on my little uh, during gameplay. Thing. It kind of makes it come off at best rude and at worst an insensitive jerk. <laughs> Thanks, you... Jason. Okay. I'll stop donating as well. And going by the earlier cutscenes, I really don't think that was their intention. This cutscene really got to me the first time I played this game because it's the first time it happens. I can't use a ladder with my arm like this. <laughs> wow. Really, Henry? He's just like, okay, bye. You're just gonna leave her there in that room, alone, without a word? Not even about whether or not you plan on coming back? Nothing? Okay, then. <laughs> and that's one of those things that bugs me about this game. It brings two people together for the entire second half of the game and barely develops their relationship at all, aside from the good ending where it's hinted that maybe they're on their way to becoming a couple. I guess we'll have to find a new place to live, huh? And once again, Henry could have said something <laughs> here, but no. I realize that the game really isn't about Henry, the next but they still could have start developed a little bit better bank as notes into the air. <laughs> but one thing I will say in Henry's defense is that I disagree with people who say he shows no emotion. He certainly isn't an outwardly emotional person, and that is kind of jarring, especially after Heather. But he displays That's plenty true. of emotion, it's just subtle. Could be because he's been numbed by all he's been through, or maybe he thinks it's not really happening, so he's a little emotionally detached. Agreed, Chris. Or maybe that's just the way he is. Everyone is different, and some people just don't have big reactions to things. Also, the instruction manual <laughs> Jason! refers to him as a calm young man. <laughs> now, is this a good sort of character to have in a horror game? Maybe not. A lot of people come away from this game. The good ending feels Henry like it's from a bad soap. Ouch, Even among people who generally true. like the game except for one or two things, usually Henry is one of those things. Most people just don't give a damn about him and it ruins their enjoyment of the game, so maybe it wasn't the best way to go. He doesn't get a lot of love except from fangirls like me who thinks he's a <laughs> the super mega hottie. <laughs> Either way, here are some scenes where his reactions kind of stand out as convincing for me and generally gain my sympathy. When he finds Cynthia dying, you can almost literally hear his heart hit the floor. A few seconds later, it seems to really hit him, and he has to avert his eyes for a second. 
Then there's his body language when he discovers Andrew DeSalvo's Thank you, Sebastian. <laughs> he actually gives himself a nasty You're tearing me apart, I mean. That doesn't show he cares. I don't know what does. That's my Henry impression. <laughs> and who could forget? I when mean. he thinks Eileen is dead, and it hits him so hard he collapses. And finally, when he stares down Walter right before that final battle, I think it's safe to say that Henry just took a level in badass. <laughs> During that the cutscene where you off meet Joseph, you find out that Henry is indeed intended to be the final victim. Number 21, the receiver of wisdom. Which makes sense. He's the one who's been made to witness everything, with no power to stop it up until this point. But I remember getting up to this part in the game and just being wowed by that. Number 21, the receiver of wisdom. Henry Townsend. It's like, sorry Henry, you're just another victim. Sucks to be you. Ouch. Heavy Rain's worst of the Henry worst the ending gives you a gold trophy. <laughs> had history with Walter Sullivan. It seems that he was more or less picked at random. I know most people aren't exactly enamored with Henry's voice I acting. I think it's at least passable. I don't know where Press X for nostalgia. It'd be hard to do a voice that involves downplaying emotion and doing it convincingly. So I give him credit for doing a pretty good job with it. I saw people getting killed. If you wanted to know, the actor's name is Eric Bosick. Yeah, I believe IMDb in this case because the information was entered either by him or his agent. He looks a little like Henry. Thanks, Special Iron. You guys ain't oh, recently, going to not. More the main character in a Japanese movie that was done in You English guys ain't Tetsuo going to Bullet not Man. denate me. I haven't seen it, but it looks interesting. Curse you, I understand. I won't be able to donate for a while after this one. It's also been pointed out in a few places that Henry also resembles actor Peter Krause. I can kind of see it. Henry's cuter, though. I, Poor Henry, we don't I even know like anything I'm about dying. his family. That's true. It's just a tree. <laughs> okay, this final part. I guess we're only gonna watch Silent Hill 4 today. Yeah, it's got 15, 15 minutes, but I can... To finish up with Henry and Eileen, I just wanted to point out something over. interesting I stumbled onto recently. I felt kind of stupid for not realizing this a lot sooner, actually. But the more Eileen gets hurt, the more dramatic the cutscenes toward the end are, and the more interesting her interaction with Henry is. They actually seem closer. Now here's a little montage of what I've always gotten, because I tend to play on easy and I never let Eileen get hurt. My parents just threw him away, right after he was born. I've gotta help him. Going back, Henry. <laughs> That's okay, Kura. Henry Thanks is. anyway. We're the only ones. The only ones that can stop him. Here's what you get if Eileen is about halfway possessed. <sighs> that boy. He's coming in. He really thinks that room 302 is his mother. I've got to help him. Are you okay? Coined the phrase denate. <laughs> I'm going back, Henry Townsend. To the room where Walter Sullivan is. Henry is like the fuck. We're the only ones. The only ones who can stop him. Fan theory Henry's parents weren't so great either. Henry and is here's the same what coin happens as Walter, but on the opposite possessed. side. Could be. Mommy! I remember watching these videos when I was a teenager. Watching this stream is making me feel kind of nostalgic. Why did you leave me? Mommy? I'll wake you up. I will. <laughs> George. <laughs> Given my name, wise, consider like this an alien denation. Henry doesn't get any more dialogue, but he seems to care a lot more Thank about you. Eileen, or at least he's showing it more. And she leans on him more and doesn't abuse him. 
This is actually the kind of thing I would have wanted to see more of in this game. And it would have been nice if I didn't have to let Eileen nearly get ripped apart to get it. <coughs> so I think I've mentioned it enough times by now that Silent Hill 4 references Silent Hill 2. Walter Sullivan is the biggest example. There's <laughs> also the superintendent of South Ashfield Heights who just happens to be the dad of James Sunderland mm -hmm. from Silent Hill 2. Unfortunately, they don't really do a lot with that. His existence is pretty much just a shout-out to Silent Hill 2, and that's about it. I wish they gave him a chance to interact with Henry more. There might have been an interesting dynamic with Henry being about the same age as James was when he disappeared. But the only time we see Frank is when he's trying to get into Henry's apartment and talking with Eileen a little. When Eileen was freaking out, my one dad big said Eileen was awkward dialogue, on her period, though. classy. I just face palmed so hard. Good. <laughs> the umbilical cord I keep in a box in my room. Lately, it started. He's <laughs> just out of nowhere. Oh yeah, that umbilical cord I keep in a box. Umbilical cord. <laughs> Such a great line. Well, I forget I said anything. Ironically, ironically. Oh well, when you put it that way. There's a picture hanging on Henry's Is a series worth watching? Hell friend. yeah. Since the description states that James was never heard from again, people tend to take that to mean that Silent Hill 2's in water and it reminded me of Mr. Garrison from South but, Park. Well, movie. if you want to believe that, it's your choice. But well, I'm sorry, I Wendy, but I just don't trust way. anything that bleeds for five but days and doesn't die. In Silent Hill 2, I think <laughs> yeah, I remember Mr. That Garrison saying that. That was terrible. He would cut off all ties with anyone he knew. He'd probably go live somewhere else under a different name, which may or may not be sadder than the in water ending, depending on how you look at it. But I'd like to think that Metal he Gear at least survived and had a chance problem. The best scenes only happen if you play badly exactly on purpose. Like that. that sucks. I hate that. But my point is, no matter what ending you go by for Silent Hill 2, James would probably disappear anyway. So I don't consider this an admission of James' death. This game has extras, but after Silent Hill 3, they're a little disappointing. <laughs> Aside from the ubiquitous chainsaw and other crazy weapons, Eileen can get a newsie. There are sexy outfits for Cynthia, like she needed one, <laughs> and Eileen, both complete with jiggle physics. And that's it. And I find this a little disappointing. And it's not so much that the women are wearing sexy outfits, though they are lacking in creativity, and it was obviously done more for fan service and for fun in general. Like the alternate outfits- Also, like, I didn't mention this, I think maybe I thought of it, but I decided to not say it, because I- I don't know. I don't know what kind of reaction it was going to get, but, like, it's a little weird that this game seems to be, like, like, you're, uh, the, um, the antagonist is misogynistic. So, like, they put the women in sexy outfits as an extra. There's something seems off about that. Does that make any sense? If I ever, like, decide to mention this in a video, I'll try to word it better, but... It's in Silent Hill 3. It's more that, well, Silent Hill games have a pretty decent female following. There are a lot of good-looking guys in the Silent Hill universe, and trust me, it does not go unnoticed. <laughs> Just look up any of them on DeviantArt. Just make sure the filter is on. <laughs> so it kind of sucks that we got the shaft here. I'm not saying it should be like what they did with the female characters. Just, I don't know, put Henry in a tux or something. <laughs> My name is Townsend. Henry Townsend. Give us Thanks, female fans some love too. That's all I'm saying. My mother was anyway, an addict of the alien. Sadly, there is no the... joke ending like she has good taste. All the other games. Apparently, there was going to be a UFO ending because if you use action replay or something like that to start the game with all the items, you'll find channeling stones in your inventory, along with a courtyard key and red oil. Aglaftis? I wonder what that would have been used for. I think it's Aglaphotis. I, I think I said that wrong. Either way, all of this was obviously scrapped at some point. You mean you guys don't keep an umbilical cord in a box Silent in your Hill room? Was well, neither do I. By a, lot of media. <laughs> a novel called Coin Locker Babies, which is a surreal Alien story Denation should be what you call your followers. <laughs> infancy, and locked in coin it can be on shirts. The logo can be the current kitty the body with an alien head. I haven't read it myself, but going by the descriptions I've read, it's pretty easy to see how Walter's Sullivan's beginnings were inspired by it. Apparently some cultures keep their firstborn's umbilical cord sort of a life milestone. That's interesting. It's Japanese, of course, but it has been translated into English, in case you might be interested in checking it out. There's also apparently a movie being made. <laughs> of course, Jacob's Ladder has inspired pretty You don't know what jiggle physics Hill means? Like their boobs ways. bounce when but they Silent move? Silent Hill 4's opening is very similar to a deleted scene from Jacob's Ladder, not to mention the head twitching. Apparently the short the end story credits to my Stephen videos could include a big thanks to my alien denators. With the whole concept of being trapped in a room with weird stuff going on. 
Funny thing about 1408, though, I saw the movie after playing Silent Hill 4 and found the similarities really interesting. I was meant then to make a video about this never got around to it. found the movie is a lot more in common with Silent Hill 4 than the story does. Hmm. I plan on going into that a lot more in a later video, but for now, I just wanted to point that out. Some other things that inspired Silent Hill 4 that I'm not that My familiar with are... My one true ship was Douglas and Heather. Novels, House of Leaves and Rosemary's <laughs> yeah, Not being Baby serious with that, good. <laughs> And here are a few movies that just flat out remind me of Silent Hill 4 in some ways. They may or may not have influenced Some people think it. it's this good luck to cook and eat the placenta. I've heard of that one, yeah. Maybe stuff to check out if you're a fan, if nothing else. The sale involves someone, in I this didn't case, a child Sue. psychologist. Um, well, I'm, I'm kind of wrapping up, so you missed a lot. <laughs> Basically all of Silent Hill 4. And violent sides of his psyche. Sound familiar yet? Also... Oh god, the horse. That scene with a horse was awesome. I'm just saying. Freddy Krueger draws sleeping people into his dream world oh, yeah, so he can Freddy. stalk and kill them. Which isn't too different from what Walter Sullivan does to his later victims. Walter's world isn't a dream world per se. It's a little tone deaf of Team Silent. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not the only one who here, thinks that. Then you die in the real world. Yeah, tone deaf is the best way to put Another it, really. Similarity is that both I wouldn't call it outright, dead, like, offensive or anything, but it's definitely stories. tone deaf. Walter killed himself partly because he knew it'd give if him If I ever did a follow-up on this, I might mention that. Freddy was killed by others, but he also knew that he'd give him Put him in the tux and have him play football. <laughs> what? <laughs> Charles Lee Ray, that's pre-doll Chucky, was a ritualistic serial killer, though he was into movies. Wow, I compared Walter that's Sullivan to Chucky. That's similarity right there, but check out this scene in the first Child's Play movie where they find his home, and the furniture is made out of female mannequin parts. Kind of reminds me of all the female mannequin parts scattered throughout Walter's world. In Walter's case, he's misogynistic. Okay, HD, sure thanks for Charles stopping Lee by. Ray would have something like this. He's many things, but misogynistic doesn't seem to be. Yeah, I also love 1408. Maybe he had an interest in dolls. There's even a bit of a resemblance. So basically, Walter is a combination of Freddy Krueger and Charles Lee Ray with a bit of Dr. Faustus thrown in. <laughs> That's fucked up. I think that part of the, the sexualization way, Silent of Silent Hill leads to the psych behind in the form psychological of aspect of its stream. horror being as many it's still a dance find remix sex uncomfortable. Your reign, starring Cynthia, Could be. Of all people. Who seems to be channeling Jennifer Lopez. How to model dynamic breasts? That sounds right, <laughs> Dina Nation. So I've spent a okay, lot of Joseph, time talking about thanks for stopping by. I mean, Jason, sorry. But there were some things it could have done better. I would love to see them take another crack at it and give the story the attention it deserves, but I'm not holding my breath. Then I figured that some kind of novelization from Henry's oh, here perspective we go. could be awesome. It could give him more depth, give you some idea of what he was. Thinking oh, I love about, Cat's Eye. That was kind motivation. of my gateway to Stephen King, actually. Let me get caught up on the chat really quick here. Shit, where'd I go? All right, there it is. Never say I will, always say I might, so no one can call you a liar when you never can get around to doing a video. <laughs> yeah. Poor Freddy from my favorite villain to, oh yeah, Freddy. <laughs> I'm your boyfriend now, Eileen. <laughs> Similarities between Angel Heart and Silent Hill, okay. Just proof we aren't the same person over the years rewatching your old videos and being like, wow, I said that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I keep forgetting they remade Jacob's Ladder. That really kind of came and went, didn't it? Stuff like that. So I wrote one. It's called Silent Hill 4 Introspection, and, well, it attempts to do all that stuff I just talked about. I also give Walter more dialogue, without turning him into some kind of cliché villain, I think. Tried to give the supporting characters a little more depth, and I kind of expanded on the relationship between Henry and Eileen. Some may think I ever did it, and I admit I took it a little further than I intended. Sometimes when you're writing, the story can take on a life of its own. But I think it works in context. God, I shipped this I'm not too a real so hard. Writer, I've gotten a surprising amount of positive feedback on it. It ended up on TV Tropes page for fanfic recommendations. That was pretty cool. Do I think and the Joker, a the Joker is an overused character? Not particularly. actually recommended it to me in the comment section of my videos, not realizing that I was the one who wrote it. <laughs> that tickled me. Technically, it's still a work in progress. I wanted to have it finished before now, but I just haven't had time. 
It's got a beginning, middle, General and end, and it's best up there protector, you yep. But I'm currently in the process of rewriting it and basically polishing it up. I'll put up some kind of update video when it's done. Link is in the description if you want to check it out. <laughs> to those who insist on carrying on this seething hatred for Silent Hill 4, get over it. <laughs> Let me explain why I feel justified in saying that. I know everyone's entitled to their own opinion, oh, you, and if you just don't like the game or even hate it, fine. That's not what I take issue with. There's a difference between having a <laughs> hatred of something in a way that's constructive, and then there's just being <laughs> One of petty. us, one of us. Let me give you an example. I am one of those people who hates Zelda 2. I'm not going to bother going into why because it's not important right now. But basically, Zelda 2 tried a lot of new things, and some of those things failed. But Nintendo learned from its mistakes, and the games that followed went back to feeling more like the first one. So, while I don't like Zelda 2, in the end I don't really care, because it didn't have much of an effect on the franchise as a whole. I don't like it, so I just don't play it anymore. And it's barely a blip on my radar at this point. The end. Silent Hill 4 is a similar case. We all it change when you think about it, we're all different people like, throughout our lives. And while I lives, don't like the two good, games that came true. after it, I think we can all agree that Silent so Hill 4 basically did nothing to ruin the franchise as a whole. That's a good one. Almost nothing from Silent Hill 4, even the things it did right, that carried great cat over with the glasses. Games. Yeah, that was cute. If anything, the new game seemed to pretend like it doesn't exist. Wasn't someone who tried to recommend so you your own fanfic not realizing it? Yeah, I, I mentioned that a little bit ago in the What's video. What's the point, you know? Why care so much about this one bad game in particular? It's attitudes like yeah, this that have done a great fun. disservice to the series, in my opinion. Fans pissed and moaned about every little thing that wasn't exactly like the previous games. The powers that be listen to them, and the result is two games in a row that feature Pyramid Head and Sexy Nurses. No substance, but plenty of bending over backwards to please one And no substance is a little harsh there, Dina. New and different is tried. <laughs> On the other hand, I will defend to the death my reasons for actively hating the Silent Hill movie. Unlike Silent Hill 4, it did have an effect on the franchise as a whole. Yeah. You know what? I've kind of made this rant before and probably will again, but to sum up, the movie reintroduced Pyramid Head and Sexy Nurses into the franchise, and that's bad. Silent Hill is a series that is supposed to be unique. It makes supposed me think to be of a Silent of Hill movie treatment things. ever got converted to a Hellraiser directed video sequel. In the first place. Interesting. Lately, it's become almost nothing but fan service. Ironically, Shattered Memories, despite involving all the characters from the original game, is the only creative title to come out since Silent Hill 4, and it does renew my faith in the series. Let's just hope they can keep it going. Well, that I read the fic that might as well be Silent the official Hill novelization in my mind, thank you. I my opinions on this one. Short version, it's got its flaws, but it's worth playing. Give it a chance. There's still time. That's it for now, <laughs> see you next time. Since our cells are constantly dying and being replaced, so yeah, we're not the same people we used to be. That's a good You gotta point. be shitting me! Don't go out. <laughs> Bayless! Oh yeah? Lee's mom is gonna kill you for getting blood on her door. Oh shit. <laughs> that was so dumb. Oops, I better- I love this song, but I better, uh... It might- this video might get claimed if I let it play. Zelda 2 is definitely a black sheep. At least 4 is an homecoming, yeah. Uh, I still think homecoming is at least better than Origins. Well, story-wise. At least I can play Origins. <laughs> I read that Silent Hill 4 was meant to play into Japanese fears, so... And this could be a crackpot theory, but maybe Henry is supposed to feel like a... Not an otaku, but just a hermit. Yeah, I've heard that before, that, uh, I've heard that- I'm pretty sure I've heard Henry referred to by that word before. I'm not gonna try to say it. <laughs> From Earth, that was the, uh, oh, let's see if there's a- Was I, uh, putting stingers in the videos at this point? Oh, yeah. Oh, I know it's coming. <laughs> I love that line. He's a peeping Tom. He 
Adina's closing argument is courtroom worthy. Thank you. If, and that's a huge if, we get a new Silent Hill movie, I do not want something that tries to adapt the game's story, make a story focusing on something new. I mean, that would work. I, I uh, That's always been something that I, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind them doing. I've read some pretty good fan fiction that's just like the characters, or the, uh, the writer just put their own characters in Silent Hill and just kind of use the themes of Silent Hill, not any specific characters or monsters or anything. Should have been a rant alert when you briefly talked about the movie. That's true. That would have been the third rant alert in this video. <laughs> oh, you like my podcast regarding the Silent Hill movie with Lotus Prince? That's cool. That was a fun podcast to do. So many good rants, yeah. <laughs> Let's just hope they keep it going. <laughs> uh, I like Downpour. And Shattered Memories. How crazy is that Silent Hill and Resident Evil are crossing over in Dead by Daylight. Yeah, that's true. Agree with the message of letting go of the hate or not getting too invested. Gotta go for... Oh, gotta go for the night. Take care and stay safe. Thanks, Sebastian. Thanks for stopping by and have a good evening. Oh, you're right, it was Silent Hill Revelation, duh. <laughs> I had forgotten too for a second. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a fun little cameo there. <laughs> Morgan Freeman. It turns out they couldn't keep it up. Oh yeah, you you guys are referring to Silent Hills, duh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that sense, yeah, they didn't keep it up. <laughs> They kept it up until downpour, and that was it. I mean, I'm sure you can still hear it, just if it's a really low volume, YouTube isn't as likely to catch it. Channeling your Alex Shepard there. Yep, that was 100% intentional. <laughs> You've got to be shitting me. We signed a contract to make a song, Live in a Forest, Insects and Birds Ticking. Uh, were those the lyrics from that song? I don't remember. Or somewhat, I don't know. He certainly went for that hole in the wall. <laughs> hey dad, George, hey you on the bike. I fucking love Back to the Future. It's such a great movie. What was it, George? Bird washing? <laughs> what, Lorraine? What? <laughs> I really liked, um... I really liked Crispin Glover in Back to the Future. I know there's uh, reasons why he wasn't in the sequels, but man, I really missed him. Really missed having that character. <sighs> Honestly, the Hellraiser DVD sequels are, in my opinion, amazing Silent Hill movies. Yeah, a couple of them are, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if I'd call them amazing, but pr at least pretty good Silent Hill movies. <laughs> Talking about Silent Hill just makes me sad about Silent Hills all over again. I know. I think that's one of the reasons I just kind of didn't feel like making these videos anymore. Just got kind of depressing. Dean Rants were always a fun time. <laughs> Watch these videos a lot back then. Very chill vibes. Hope you're doing well. Thanks, Kevin. Hope you are too. Hope I can catch the next stream on time. Yeah, well, uh, daylight savings time ends for me tomorrow, so it's gonna, if, uh, well, I, I don't know if you're in the U.S. or one of the other countries, but at least my, my time is going to line up the way it's supposed to, if that makes any sense. I'd love to see other franchise characters in Silent Hill, like... Ron Swanson? Ron Swanson? I'm not sure who that is. Oh, Sterling Archer. I know who that is, at least. Oh, was Tara making noise? I didn't even hear it. <laughs> I, can't, I just tune her out sometimes. The only downfall of Konami games is their greed. Yeah. Oh, you guys were hearing Tara at some point. Excuse me. Maybe I did hear, but I just forgot because I'm a little behind here. 
will forever be pissed that Silent Hill's 20th came and went and we got nothing. Yep. There was a hole here. It's still here. <laughs> Thanks for the years of great content. You were always my favorite content creator on that guy with the glasses back in the day. Thanks, Platinum. Is that worse? Better or worse than Castlevania getting an erotic violence pachinko for its anniversary? <laughs> Good point. Hargle bargle. <laughs> there was a hole here. It's gone now. Well, maybe someone came along in the meantime and filled it in. I'm just saying not everything in that game has to be a supernatural phenomenon. <laughs> At least another comic could have been greenlit. That's true. Ah, oh, you're in the UK and still haven't adjusted to the hour change yet. Yeah, you guys, uh, your um, daylight savings time ends before ours do, or before ours does. So, like, we're. I think I'm an hour. I think I'm a week behind on that. You know, I have an account on Letterboxd, but I barely use it. <laughs> I used it, like, when I first made it, and then I just never used it again. I'm always getting emails from them, and I'm like, oh yeah, that site. <laughs> I just remembered that in the Silent Hill 1 review, you promised us regular <laughs> related Silent Hill videos on Halloween. I know, I had every intention to, but it just never really panned out. I did the... the um, top five Silent Hill fan theories that are wrong, and I just never did any more after that. I think partly is because I, it, that video kind of got kind of a bad, um, I got, got kind of a bad reaction from Pete, from some people. I just got tired of it. Mom, pay attention to me. <laughs> that is Tara, 100%. How can you tune out Tara chirruping? It's so cute because she does it all the fucking time. <laughs> oh, Parks and Recreation. I haven't really watched that. Not Silent Hill related, but have you heard of Antlers? It recently came out and deftly handles themes of abuse and family troubles in settings dripping with that atmosphere and it has a Wendigo. I've heard about it. I have not... Oh yeah, I've heard about it. I guess it's not out yet. Or oh, you said it recently came out. Okay, I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard of it. Yeah, I know. I watched the uh, I watched the movies that made us episode on Back to the Future. I don't know. His point of view was something different, and some of the actors backed him up. So I I, I don't know what really happened. Either way, it's too bad he couldn't be in the sequels because I thought he was great in the first one. Poorly done remaster was a bigger insult than not getting any remaster at all. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> Sold it with the Wendigo. <laughs> yeah. Wendigos are interesting. Here the director of the first Silent Hill is working on a new horror game. Hopefully that will fill the Silent Hill drought. The director of the first... As in the first Silent Hill game? That's interesting. Would another comic being greenlit be a good thing, though? It depends. Probably not, though. Going by their track record. Daylight savings time, why is this still a thing? <laughs> what is erotic violence exactly? Who the hell knows? Oh yeah, Scott C. Ensign, the guy who did the first Silent Hill comics. Well, I, I think he actually passed away, so uh, we don't have to worry about that. Hoping if Kojima does a horror game, he uses all the Silent Hill ideas. Oh, Silent Hill's ideas, right. Yeah, that would be cool if something good came out of that, other than a fucking demo and a lot of people copying the demo. The last three were fine, if still not great. Oh, are you talking about the comics? <laughs> 
<laughs> I was wondering what those symbols at the end were. I figured it was uh, a typo or just not something I didn't get. <laughs> What's erotic violence? What box head did Dina when Hulk Hogan was on? <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Alien denation. <laughs> okay, Terry, thanks for stopping by. I'm in Germany and we had the hour change last week and I completely missed that it already happened because I was out partying, so I turned the clock back too far. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> the nice thing is that cell phones and computers tend to update on their own, so it's just a matter of going around and changing the clocks on like the microwave and shit. <laughs> I left the kaiju community and kept getting notifications from a Godzilla website I haven't moderated in years about new members joining. <laughs> That's funny. Favorite line in Back to the Future 2 is probably get the hell out of my car, old man. <laughs> I remember that. Ah, the director of the first Silent Hill game started a new company. That's cool. I mean, some of the people behind Silent Hill also made Siren, which I couldn't really get into, so. Speaking of Wendigos, I would like to see more lore-accurate depictions of them in media rather than pop culture staghead. <laughs> yeah. More Wendigos. The shark still looks fake. Yeah, that's a good one. What is erotic violence exactly? May I introduce you to Clive Barker? That's the perfect response to that question. Uh, have you tried out Soma? I have not played Soma, but I watched Markiplier play it. It looked like a really good game. It, um, the story was really good, at least. It's got excellent atmosphere and a really well-written story. It might be something that will appeal to you, yeah. What I gather, erotic violence generally means sexy, scantily clad girls slaying monsters and spraying blood all over her. Yeah, that's most likely what they intended. One of Superman's creators did to pay the bill. Seriously, I forget which one, but one of them scraped by on s and and Bondage comics. <laughs> Interesting. Erotic violence can also describe the opening to Basic Instinct. <laughs> yeah, that does sound like something Wonder Woman's creator would do. <clears> hmm. <throat> I think Biff is a very funny character altogether. Now why the why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? <laughs> Yeah, I like old Biff interacting with young Biff. <laughs> it's leave, make like a tree, and leave. You sound like an idiot when you say it wrong. <laughs> Something like that. Wasn't Silent Hill based on a Japanese story? I mean... I mean, it's not an adaptation or anything. It was made by Japanese people. <laughs> I used to love Wendigo stories. I live in Canada, so it's folk tales for me. That's cool. It's about as funny as a screen door on a battleship. A screen door on a submarine, you dork. <laughs> Professor Marston and the Wonder Women. Oh, like the ring was based on ring? No. No, Silent Hill isn't based on anything. It's, uh, just, it's an original story. <laughs> Does Lee still make videos? He hasn't been. He keeps talking about maybe doing it again, but so far he hasn't. 
Erotic violence is something that Pyramid Head seems to be into. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Still think the Clive Barker one was the funniest, but that's that's pretty good too. Okay, you guys, I need to wrap up. I'm half an hour late. Um, we might be able to finish this up next week. Um, what's left? Mm, I may get all the way through downpour, but uh, maybe not. Maybe I'll only get it up to... Oh, there we go. I do have uh, the video I did about the first movie on here. So yeah, the videos are getting longer now, so we're not going to be able to get through as many, but... I think maybe it'll take about two more streams to finish this, but we'll see. Oh, that's right, he did, uh, he did upload those Double Dragon, uh, playthroughs. Or, like, it was gameplay footage, I think. The Ring novels get weird, I've heard that. Speaking of Japanese stories, if you want a game all about some creepy-ass Japanese urban legends, check out the visual novel game Deathmark and its sequel NG. I'll keep that in mind. I'll shoot you down like a duck. <laughs> it's dog tan and shoot you down like a dog. <laughs> uh. Okay, Ashtray, glad you liked it. Quite a lot is left, yeah. I'm thinking maybe two more weekends will do it, but we'll see. Oh yeah, I'm probably going to have to get a full-time job soon, so I won't be able to stream except on weekends pretty soon. I'd like, I want to try to get a part-time job that's like 32 hours a week, but it seems like they're only ever 20 hours a week, and that's not enough hours. I wouldn't make enough money at that, so I'm kind of leaning towards finding a full-time job, unfortunately. I'm still going to try to at least stream on the weekends, but I don't know how it's going to affect my Twitch channel. I might... I might have to start over from scratch with building an audience there. But we'll see. Thanks, Christopher. Glad you liked it. <laughs> Memorable stream for the D-Nations alone. Tara, I swear to God, if you jump on this desk... Okay, she's not. <laughs> Twelve vids by my offhand account. I didn't really count the videos, I was just trying to look at the times on them and do the math in my head really quick to see how much, how many of them would add up to two hours. So many donations and names in chat, great times. Yeah, this was really fun, you guys. Um, yeah, and thank you for the donations especially, that was great. Every little bit helps, you know, even if it's just a little bit. If it's enough people, you know. They seem to be popular, I'd say carry on if you feel like it, yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, thanks for stopping by, everybody. This was fun. Um, trying to remember which button to click to end this. Yeah, it's this one. So yeah, uh, see you next time.